Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're all doing well. It's been a while since we've had a stream and we're back with a classic land battle, baby. So it is going to be a Swiss format, which means every player is going to be guaranteed at least four rounds if they want to play them. And from there, we will take our top players and have our top four. All the good times will be rolling. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the tournament for today. So finding the attorney site. There we go. So old school tournament. Here's the bracket. So we got a lot of strong players playing and uh, I'll be casting a variety of games today. We're going to try and give you a good variance of factions to watch. And after four rounds of competition, we are going to be taking the top players and then having a semifinal and a grand final as well. So all matches are best of one just to kind of keep it fast and furious. And that is that. So let's get it going. How you guys doing? Welcome. Hope you guys all had an excellent New Year's, ex excellent holiday, all that sort of good stuff. Yes, yes. And uh, let's get it. Let's get it. Okay, so finding this, go to multiplayer, and we got a lot of games to cast. We have a whole bunch. So this one could be fun. I think this is a dwarf match. I'm not sure, but we'll get to the bottom of this one. Players are just getting in their lobbies right now. If you are playing in the tournament today, please do leave a spectator slot on, and uh, we'll do our best to uh, cast your game. Should be fun. Yeah, this is live, man. It is. Yes, I'm back. I was in Poland for the... Um, ooh, Lizardman. Okay, this could be fun. We'll do the dinosaur game. But yeah, I was in uh, Poland for the holidays. I probably gained a lot of weight, <laughs> Eat, ate a lot of pierogi and uh, other delicious stuff. It was super fun. And yeah, I loved it, man. I always have a great time in Poland. Amazing country, great people. It's uh, It was just fun. It was fun. It was a little bit under under the weather for most of the trip, uh, trip, which was rough, but you know, we survived. We survived. Magic Trick turned into playing SE2 and he had fun. I did. That's true, Pone. I, I was actually thinking about it last night. So Pone and I... I haven't played StarCraft 2 since 2011, so it's been 13 years, give or take. And um, I had a great time playing it last night. I played with Pwn. We played a couple games. It was really fun. He, he was teaching me the ropes again. Yeah, it was fun, though. It was a good time. I'll, I'll probably do some more StarCraft. Maybe, I don't know if we'll stream it. Maybe we'll do some, you know, 2v2s or something. I don't know if I want to put in the effort to, like, learn the meta and learn all the new units. Because I only played Wings of Liberty. I didn't play... Heart of the Swarm or Legacy of the Void. So I don't know what all the new units do, which is kind of like frustrating from a competitive standpoint. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Holidays are ruining. I know. That's just how it goes. So this is going to be Lizardman versus Empire. A matchup I used to dread back in the day. Granted, I think that good Empire players can certainly handle themselves. Uh, you know, you have your wagons. Grenade launchers are going to be quite solid, I would imagine. I can see... I can see some cheeky greatswords being mixed in too. Maybe like one or two, because they'll trade pretty well in Dasaurus. But uh, are a little bit vulnerable as well. <laughs> Best thing about Polish is X is the mother-in-law's kitchen. Oh yeah, man, that's true. Yeah, no, I, I ate pretty well out there. I missed a lot of StarCraft 2. I did. Yeah, no, I didn't play any of the expansions. I don't know what it was. After the first expansion of um, StarCraft, it kind of, for me, lost its... Uh, it lost its flavor. I don't know. I just kind of lost interest when the uh, Heart of the Swarm came out. And I think a, there was a bit of a decline when Heart of the Swarm came out in terms of players and all that sort of good stuff. So, um, all right. Let's do this. Perfect. Um, just doing a little bit of admin work before we get started. People are trying to find one another. And let's do that. Perfect. And if you're playing in the event, please do let me know. If uh, your opponent doesn't show up and we can do some uh, admin stuff, drop your opponent, advance you to the next round, all that goodness. Mikey, thank you for becoming a channel member. Welcome to the Dukes of Haggard. I'll try and mix in some more land battles this year. I, you know, I I get nostalgic every now and then. I, I was doing land battle tournaments for, gosh, it would have been like four or five years, just nonstop. So, you know, sometimes it uh, it just comes back to me. You know, I get the itch to cast it once again. So we'll uh, we'll try and mix in a little bit more as well. Mikey, yes, thank you, thank you. Happy New Year's to all of you guys. The Heart of the Swarm screwed up a lot of balance. Yeah, that's that's what I had heard. I think like Swarm Host and a couple other units like that. Uh, definitely caused some uh, some gameplay dynamic changes. Okay. So, Empire versus Lizards. I would imagine Lizards will probably go very wide, do some swarming tactics. Pterodons, if I remember, were always quite good, as well as Feral Cold Ones. Feral Cold Ones... For a very cheap price point, can trade pretty well into Empire um, Heavy Cavalry, so like Empire Knights, things like that, because of their high armor and armor piercing. So yeah, memory serves. Probably hasn't changed too much. Obviously, we have a lot of new factions in the game, but this is going to be kind of an old school one. And maybe we'll get the dreaded Luminarch. Oh, that would be the power fantasy. I haven't seen uh, I haven't seen these players play in a long time. I remember Aaron from back in the day. He played in a multitude of faction wars that we used to host and 
a couple different things like that. I believe he was a lizardman and a dwarf guy. Uh, as far as the Empire player, I do not know if I've seen him actually play in action. Yeah, it's been a while since we've streamed. I know, just got back in the country, man. Just got back in the country. Free units are always bad for game balance. Yeah, it's a tricky thing. Like in Age of Empires, they do it pretty well. Like the Ottoman Empire, for example, in Age of Empires 4 gets access to, you know, free units. It doesn't necessarily, like, they're not, like, oppressively broken or anything because the rest of the mechanics, and, you know, it's a big investment to get them and different things like that. So, all right, checking to make sure everybody's got their matches. Looks like it is so. Uh, do let me know if there's anybody who doesn't have their opponent. And this should be, the game should be faster overall than um, Domination. Land battles are usually between, like, four and, like, eight minutes long, I, I would say, in my anecdotal experience. Sometimes a little bit longer if you get, like, a... Like a good scrap, it can go up like 10, 11, 12 minutes, but typically they're a little bit shorter. So typically a little bit shorter. Yeah, tomorrow we'll be streaming Age of Empires and um, yeah, we'll be doing a whole bunch of stuff this week. It's going to be a lot of fun. Hey, Goji, how you doing? Are uh, you playing Greenskins today? We'll have to cast some of your games. You got to you gotta get there, man. So the thing is, in order to make it to the uh, grand finals of today's tournament, you're going to need to probably go... You can, I mean, there will be a couple undefeated players, but then there's going to be a tiebreaker for individuals who um, go three and one as well. So you can still make it even if you lose one game. So if you get one bad matchup, which is pretty likely to happen considering it's a single faction tournament with a Swiss format, you can still qualify for the uh, top four just by, you know, playing against strong opponents and having a good tiebreaker and all that good stuff. So, all right. So here we are. We have the Empire with, um, oh, for a second, I was like, they didn't bring a caster, but it's going to be a couple great swords mixed in, which I do like. Great swords do trade relatively well in Desiris and different uh, Lizardman infantry, but are very vulnerable against Feral Cold Ones and a multitude of other tools that the Dinos can bring. So as long as you can position them well and get those good engagements, I've had good success with great swords against like Zinch and uh, Warriors of Chaos and different things like that. If you can support them properly, Empire is in a faction where you can really just throw your infantry in, just let them go in and kind of do their thing. They need to be supported. Um, to an extent like they have a lot of specialist units that are very good at one or two you know one thing per se and if you can support their weaknesses with something else it's good but, but yeah looks like a fun build so for the empire we do have double great sword spearmen front line spearmen with shields are the ideal infantry unit their shields help them against uh, skinks and skirmishers and poke and they do have really high melee defense for their price point at 42 so you just have them in the front line to absorb the beating and hold back the enemies while the great swords then find uh a more ideal engagement. So double armor-piercing uh, guns here, both of which have stock. So we have the Free Company Militia, ROR, as well as Silver Bullets, both of which are pretty damn excellent against, like, uh, big dinos, uh, Cold One Knights, whatever. They're going to shine. So we got Empire Knights. Uh, it's going to be four in total. Empire Knights are definitely the meta, I, I would imagine, in both land battle as well as Dom, although I'm a little bit rusty with the old land battle stuff. But Empire Knights are just very cost-effective. Um, not the most heavy DPS unit, but... Great armor and uh, pretty durable, right? So they'll hold the line. Then you call in Boris to help them out, provide some fire support, and they can really shine. we got Toddy up in the sky. causes terror. He heals. He's a great combat character. can help you bring down any big dinos. And lastly, Demis with Halberds in the back line. So it's a pretty well-rounded build. You know, you have your anti-infantry support uh, via the Empire Knights and Greatswords. And then you have anti-monster here with Demis and guns. It's got tools. It can do some work. Now, looking at the dino army over here of Arin... Aran is going to be coming in with the dreaded Oxyotl, which I love. Oxyotl's a fun one. You don't see him too much in domination mode, but in old land battle, Oxyotl, he can, you know, he can sit on a target and do some damage and is very, much, very, very troll to deal with. I, I, I love to see him in action. So it's going to be Oxyotl poking. Cyrus warriors with skink skirmishers all over the battlefield. And we do have cold one spear riders on the flank with uh, cold ones and also a skink oracle who's going to be up on the big beast. So it is going to be the, uh, yeah, the monster of monsters. He does shoot laser beams, does a little bit of anti-large damage. So if he can sit on like, you know, Toddy or Demogriff Knights, he'll do well, but also very vulnerable against shooting. So he's got to watch out, make sure he's not getting popped. And I'm quite excited for this game. A lot of this matchup, in my opinion, comes down to the cavalry engagements, like how effectively the Coldwind Knights can get in there. Uh, are they going to be able to overwhelm the Empire Knights, which head to head, they do win. But again, Empire will have some supporting tools for them as well. So it is going to be your boy Oxyotl rolling in dirty here. And good luck, have fun to both these players to see two armies do surge forward here on the old Battle of Land. And uh, yeah, the Duel of Fates should begin here in just a moment. Demis with Halberds at the back. Going to be looking to find some ideal engagements against Golden Spear Riders. Probably not wanting to just fight them head to head. Uh, for the Empire, we forgot to look at their magic. So I believe it was a Deathcaster. So Buna's always a very good choice. Granted, I think with Demogriff Knights, you're going to want... And Great Swords, probably Earthblood and Regrowth, is probably more of an ideal option, I would say. 
But Buna is still pretty good against Zynos because you can use it on Cold and Spear Riders. And more importantly, you can use it on uh, Salamanders and different units like that, and it will basically one-shot them. So we do see the Empire player coming in pretty balls deep here with Wars Toddbringer, looking to charge that Skink Oracle, but is going to be forced back right now. And Toddy is on the retreat while the Feral Cold Ones do dive him, and he took quite a bit of damage there. Certainly not feeling great about that. And on the flank, we do have the Empire Knights going out to go after the Skink Skirmishers here, which I think is a little bit dodgy because what can potentially happen is is a Lizard player could just collapse on him like this and punish him, but it looks like Arend is a little bit busy elsewhere and is not going to be doing that, while the Demogriff Knight's going to be looping around the side, which is good. If the Demis can screen out these uh, attack units here, the Cold and Spear Riders and Feral Cold Ones, and make sure that they don't take down these Empire Knights, that is going to be a dead Skink Skirmisher. So frontline engagement's underway. Empire Knight's going to be supporting some of the state troopers. You see the same thing going down on the other side as well as the Sons of Sigmar do uh, an infantry charge. So they move through the infantry lines, which won't do quite as much damage, but it's a little bit safer. And they do start to beat down some of the Saurus units. On the other side, we do see Arryn, the Lizardman champion, gathering up the Feral Cold Ones, looking to try and overwhelm the flank, perhaps. But so far, he has not engaged too heavily on this side. So this is going to be the big epicenter of combat here. And we do have the Demis with Halberds and Empire Knights fighting against the Cold One Spear Riders uh, and heavily overwhelming them. With Boris Toddbringer here, probably going to be able to get a pretty decisive victory considering the Cold One Spear Riders are going to be uh, suffering a multitude of penalties from the White Cloak of Ulrich and the Blood Roar, as well as Crush the Weak. Their stat line is going to be very, very bad. So overall, good engagement here for the Sons of Sigmar on the far side. Granted, we do see the Lizardmen up a little bit in value, and they do have access to healing too. As long as they don't blunder their Skink Oracle here and let him get surrounded by, like, Demogriff Knights and drag down, they should be okay. And now it looks like there's going to be an Earth Blood on the Cold One Spear Riders. Maybe, maybe they'll come back over on the backside. The Empire Knights did eventually chase down these bad boys. So we do see the Skink Skirmishers going into the trash can. And as far as the gun line of the Empire goes, a little bit rough here. Definitely need to get away. Don't want to be battling against Skink Cohorts. That's a pretty awful situation for them because, you know, they're kind of not an elite unit, but you don't want them to be fighting against a Chaff unit. That's not going to be where they really shine. Silver Bullets here looks to be providing a little bit of fire support over against the Cold One Spear Riders, and uh, I think they're mostly obstructed. It looks like they're partially firing. Yeah, they're ripping some shots here into the Skink Skirmisher, so not terrible. Empire Knights and Empire Knights battling a 2v2 in which they'll eventually lose. Uh, Cold One Spear Riders and Feral Cold Ones will basically trade up, or I wouldn't say up because they're more expensive, but they trade very cost-effectively into the Empire Knights on the other side. Now back Oxyodles a little bit trapped down. We do see the Empire Knights running down Oxyodle, the Master Predator. A little bit caught up, and there is going to be a Flock of Doom. So a slight blunder here by the Empire, having the Denver Knights trying to kill Oxyodle. Definitely going after uh, the Skink Oracle or some of the other large threats would be much, much more ideal. Great Swords of Sigmar fighting well. Uh, looks like they've been dragged through a couple fights, up to 50 kills, and uh, they are defeating the Saurus Warriors, which is to be expected. They have good armor, they have a bonus for infantry, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's a big bonus for infantry too. It's 14, so the Saurus should lose that fight. You can see the Great Swords are butchering them rather quickly. And Arryn did hear the call, not Arryn, excuse me, the Empire player, and he is going to be getting the Demogriff Knights and heading over to the Skink Oracle, trying to chase it down, but they are forced back by a Terror Route as well as the Skinks and some of the supporting fire. So close fight for sure. Bounce of power, pretty damn even here. Arryn does have a slight value lead or a gold value lead and also does have a couple Earth Bloods in tandem with that, but the back line is secured. Silver Bullets are freed up from the Skink Skirmishers. I do like the uh, usage of Toddy here as like a Terror Route just to push off these harassing units. If the guns can get back online, that's going to be providing quite a bit of value, but the Dinos have won a lot of pretty decisive engagements. Even though this fight over here didn't go super well for the Dinosaurs, here it went very well. They got two Empire Knights, not for free, but for a very, very good trade. So that's going to be, you know, 1,600 gold plus of the Empire not trading very effectively. And also the front line of the Empire typically will lose against the Lizards, unless there's a couple other supporting variables, right? So in the backfield, the two gun lines, uh, the gun units are stabilized. Toddbringer could do some good carrying this game, but the issue is Oxyodle still has a ton of ammunition, and I believe the Skink Oracle is still scurrying around somewhere. Let's go and see where this bad boy is. So looking, looking, looking. He might have gotten routed or something. We'll have to keep tabs on that and look. No, there he is. Okay, so the Skink Oracle is back. I was going to say, he didn't, uh, you know, pay the troll toll here. I do really like the usage of Toddy, though. This is really, really good by the Empire player to just perpetually route these things in the backfield that are trying to get onto the guns. And if the guns can find a way to stabilize, they can definitely mow down a ton of these units. But the Empire's looking very bare bones on units overall. We see Toddy, we see the two gun units. We do also see the Amethyst Wizard, who is going to be dropping a Spirit Leech down on these bad boys here. Or this bad boy, I should say. Uh, I guess there's two of them, technically, so it doesn't make, you know, it makes a little bit of sense. Gun line in the back, shooting against the advancing Skinks. The Empire looking like they're really, really running out of steam. Empire Knights coming back from the edge of the map, but there's Cold and Spear Riders that are soon to be rallied to the main field. Oxyodle has a ton of ammo. Easily going to be able to kind of poke down Boris Toddbringer over the course of the game. 
And once again, another terror route is going to be coming in from the Sons of Sigmar as Big Toddy does move in and uh, does push back these skinks once again. But another wave is coming in and more stalwart infantry for the dinosaurs are going to be arriving soon. We do see the old Saurus warriors moving their way up and Oxyodal continues to just poke away. Probably up to about 800 value, I would guess. Oh, still got it, baby. Still got it. 819 value. Not bad at all. 71 Saurus on the other side. We got 29 right here. 21 Spear Riders. And I believe there was over 40 of them back here, at least 32. So yeah, pretty good numbers here for the Dinos. And the Empire is looking really, really to be on death's bed. I mean, Toddy is a very good carry character, but um, this is a little bit too much, especially considering there's a big monster on the field still that's very healthy. We have a Skink Oracle. And I would imagine that the Dinosaurs probably still have access to some good healing. So Aaron is going to be able to drop some fat heals on, uh, on you know, I would imagine a multitude of his units, but Oxyadol and, uh, you know, the Skink Oracle itself would probably be the ideal targets. So Gunline here, man, Toddy is just fighting tooth and nail to save this position, man. And Empire is one of those factions that can look like they're dead, and then they just find a way to come back from the grave and just get these victories. And, I mean, it's not with, out of the realm of possibility. The Spirit Leeches on the Skink Oracle is very, very good, wearing that bad boy down. Skink Oracle is about to run out of ammo. Oxyodal, though, unfortunately for the Empire, does have a ton of ammunition. Sterling's uh, Free Company going to be running back here. Silver Bullets might be able to stabilize with a couple of models. Cold on Spear Riders coming in, and Toddy's going to be moving across. Empire Player does a really good job of rallying the Free Company Militia, and they're going to be charging across, ripping some shots as they do. May be able to pick off a couple of these models. We do see a couple of Spear Units rallying, rallying to the banner. The Sons of Sigmar, they move forward. Cold on Spear Riders getting poked pretty damn good. But Boris Hodbringer now in Mortal Kombat with the Big Skin Coracle. And if he can somehow defeat this Oracle with a little bit of fire support, like, he can definitely kill Oxyodal if he can find him. But, yeah, it's looking like he's taking a little bit too much damage in the process. There's also some Cold and Spear Riders with their anti-large spears here doing some really, really good attacks. And old Toddy is, uh, he's looking to be in some danger as he is going to be shattering. And victory is going to be going to the Dinosaurs in our first game of today's stream. Once again, thank you all for joining. And that was a fun game. It was good. I think that if the Empire had been more cautious with their Empire Knights on the Western flank and hadn't let them just get overwhelmed by their hard counters, I think the Empire player could have been in good shape because he did have some good engagements across the battlefield, but the front line was more or less lost, so he needed to win those flanks and, uh, you know, wasn't able to do it. GG well played. So let me go make sure there's no admin issues. I think everybody has been able to find their game. And uh, this should be quicker. Land battle is a quicker format than domination overall. Much, much quick, uh, quicker. Uh, so we should be getting to the next round soon. Now, let's see. Although, well, that was one of the first ones that was reported as well. Yeah, Lizard's doing it. Don't worry, Sigmar. So there's plenty of Sigmar players here today. There's plenty. So here's the tournament. Um, we have Rusty was able to win his first match. And then we have a lot of players who are still wrapping up their games. And I would imagine they'll be coming to their conclusion soon. That wasn't like a super quick game, but I'm surprised we haven't had more one-sided karate chops today. That does tend to happen. Yeah, yeah. It's good, man. It is good. Yeah, it's fun to play. You know, I had a I had a couple good land battle games on stream the other night. Not stream, but um, uh, on uh, quick battles. I played on ladder. I was pretty happy to have them. So it kind of inspired me. But really, the the main reason I've been a little bit more inspired to do some land battles again is because of the um, the old world tabletop. It just I don't know what it is about it, but it just kind of made me want to go back to the old school a little bit. Yeah. So we will be covering the old world tabletop game. Um, as soon as that comes out, I'm super excited for that. And uh, we'll be doing some showcases of the armies and everything. Just got to get them all, uh, all ready to go. I've been uh, hobbying pretty hard, working on my Warriors of Chaos. The Empire is more or less ready. And when the uh, Tomb Kings eventually come out in tabletop, I will collect them as well. Yes, yes. How you guys all doing? Welcome. <laughs> Still got it, baby. Still got it. Yeah, Aaron, that was a great game. The Oxyodal, man. He came into the clutch. What kind of value did we get from Oxy? A thousand? Not bad. 2,900 on that Skink Oracle, though. Jesus, that thing did work. It's, it was able to wear down Toddy, I would imagine. Probably did some good work against um, the Demogriff Knights, too. We had the Saurus Warriors. We had the Feral Cold Ones. Yeah, a lot of the good staples for Dinos. One of the things we didn't see, which is very meta, or at least used to be, was the uh, Pterodon Riders. I think like one or two Pterodon Riders are so cost-effective at shutting down gun pieces and artillery that uh, having you know a couple of those. Whenever I used to play, I used to play this matchup a ton. Like, I used to play this matchup just massively, massively against my boy Falcon back in the day. And Falcon was, you know, one of the goats of Warhammer in general. And, and, and like, his Lizardman was so terrifying to play against. And I remember having just straight-up nightmares of playing against his Pterodon Riders, like, over and over. Like, any, like, cool backfield piece I wanted to bring would just die somehow to his Pterodon. Yeah. 
Badger Knight, thank you for the 20. Turn Warhammer 3 stream, great way to start 2024. Yeah, man, it's good. We're having fun. Got a little bit of downtime now before the next game. I would imagine everybody else is playing. It looks like a lot of the games are wrapping up. We see a fair amount in progress. Well, let's go to the website and refresh and see how we're looking. I'm really considering that Tomb King's box. Yeah, yeah, the Bone Dragon. He looks cool. He looks really, really cool. All right, a couple more games are wrapping up here. And uh, if you do need to drop from today's tournament, do message me directly. You should be able to drop on the website, but sometimes there can be a little bit of bugginess with that. So please do let me know, and I'll drop you manually and make sure there's no issues. Waking up in a cold one sweat. I know, it's true, dude. It's true. Yeah, those were, you know, Warmer 2 definitely had some, some cool times. Um, obviously, the game was newer back then, and it had... Um, we had some pretty good support from CA back then. Like there used to be an employee who worked at CA who was very passionate about multiplayer. And I, I worked with him to uh, do the Everchosen events. And you know, those were really fun. Like being able to travel and you know, have these really, really kind of, you know, higher production value events was great. That was great. How does a bone dragon fly if its wings are just bones? Uh, well, magic, because the, you, could, you could say the same thing for the, the entire Tomb Kings or vampire counts. Like, how are these decrepit creatures moving and swinging and riding horses that have no muscles or sinew or fiber on them? Well, it's magic. There's a ancient magic that animates uh, all these creatures, and you know that's how they do it in the lore. Yeah. Turn wanted to drop in the attorney, but there was. <laughs> hey, Pone, how you doing? Oh, you wanted to get in. Oh no. Well, Pone, if somebody drops, we can uh, we can probably sub you in or something like that. Yeah, we'll we'll see. All the ECL tournaments were how I found the channel. Yeah, the ECL tournaments were fun. You know, I always wonder about that formatting-wise. Like, we have Total Tavern and we have seasons there, but the seasons are much longer, and they're also contingent on Creative Assembly's schedule, which is pretty pretty damn haggard, right? Like, they're, uh, <laughs> you know, you know how it is these days. So it's tricky, you know? The ECL format was fun because it was like eight weeks of consistent competition with a big narrative storyline. Granted, I think uh, the other format is more merit-based. Like, I like Total Tavern's format for like it being a little bit more you know you get you get like a better result i think over a longer period of time but it can drag on a little bit so there's pros and cons of both formats yeah there's pros and cons you're still at work pun i'm sorry to hear that man sorry to hear that yeah that was pretty fun dread soaring it was it was no but you know every every game has its ups and downs and it's uh you know it's glory days and it's, it's rougher days and all that goodness I'm interested in the old world, but my lizards are on circle bases, but I don't want to change them because I do use them for... Mm, that's tricky, yeah. Yeah, Archer, so what you would do is you would want to get um, a movement tray that that would... Um, there's movement trays for round to square, where you try and get the movement trays that will cover the same surface area as if they were on square bases, more or less. It's a little bit tricky because the Age of Sigmar bases are pretty big. Like, I think a lot of the those units are going to be on, like, 32 millimeter bases. But yeah, it's very doable. And honestly, if you're playing old world, like who if they're on if you're on a movement tray and it's like a little bit bigger, like nobody's like if you're playing casually, nobody's gonna care. I don't think. Yeah. Yeah, I hope so, Bob. I hope to hear it, man. I hope to hear it. All right, so a little bit more downtime. Let's go ahead and check in and see if we, in general, maybe I'll play some land battles in between. I was gonna play today, but my damn hand is hurting pretty good, so. Yeah, we got about half the games done. Looks like there's still some very, very sweaty ones in action. So taking a look at the brackets for today, let's go ahead and find it. And yeah, so we've got a handful of the matches. Stingers has won, Race has won, Green One has won, defeating Berserk, wow. Berserk's a very good player, but Green One must be very solid also. Sal Salinator, hard to come by. Rusty was able to win. Human Boy still in his game. I have no idea how to read that name. We got Catholic versus Pigman, Outer Region versus uh, Regnum here, Gojira versus World Beater. Yeah, you can see a lot of these. Goji, did you re you're t you're typing in chat, Goji? Go report your score. Aaron needs to report his score as well. Yeah, he needs to report that. I'm gonna go ahead and message him. So there's just people not reporting their score. Also, all right, come on. So Aaron, uh, report that score. And Goji, you too, man. Quit messing around here. Report that score. All right. So those bad boys should get those reported, and we will be all good. Looking forward to the Thrones. Yeah, no, the Thrones of Decay is definitely like the update that would be the best for me. Like Empire Empire and Nurgle are two factions that I basically have in tabletop. Like I have an Empire army and I have a Warriors of Chaos Warband, which is Nurgle themed. Um, they have like white armor with like green stains on it. And then uh, 
Yeah, the bases I didn't do a very good job with. I'm a little bit un unhappy about the bases, but you can't win them all. Human Boy's opponent is Edward Teach, and got it, got it. Yeah, Human Boy's playing today. We'll cast one of his games next. We will. Bastion, your legend turn. Thanks for the continued great content. Happy New Year's. One question. How do you adequately beat large units as vampire counts? Uh, usually it's done through like SE dueling. So there's a couple ways of doing it. You can tar pit. Uh, if you're playing vampire counts, let's do this and do this. I uh, Vampire counts is one of my weaker factions, but I've also, you know, I casted land battles for four years and Dom for three years. So I have a little bit of experience in it uh, of seeing them in action. So one method is to use the Cryptors just to tarp at them. And that's a really slow method. It'll grind them down and, you know, take some time. But a lot of good Vampire Count players are very good with their single entity. So they'll have like a, a Blood Dragon Lord, for example, is a very, very popular one. So Blood Dragon Lord is a pretty insane duelist. And the reason why is you put him on the Zombie Dragon, you go Blood, and he has access to the Sword of Antiheroes as well as Helm of Discord. So he'll, he'll just heavily, heavily punish the stats of his target. And he'll come in and annihilate them. You can also use Vargulfs. They're not as good, but you know, with good cycle charging, they can do well. Um, Blood Knights can do good, but be, if you're expecting a blob fight against monsters, don't, Blood Knights aren't going to do it. Um, they they will not trade super well in um, a big blob. But um, yeah, an open field they can do okay. It depends on what you're fighting. If you give me more variables and more circumstances, I can give you better examples. But typically, they they'll use their own single entities like Blood Dragon Lord. Uh, Terror Geists, there was a time where they were somewhat meta, but I would imagine most people just use kind of the Zombie Dragon and Cryptors in tandem with one another, as well as like maybe White Kings, but yeah, it's tricky. Bojan, thanks for becoming a channel member. Welcome to the Dukes of Haggard, my friend. Hope you're doing well. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. It's going to be good. Double Vargulfs can work. It can. It really depends on the matchup you're in. That's the thing about this game. There's so many damn matchups that, um, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to just have one conclusive result. You know, you got to have uh, the specifics. All right, only a couple games left to finish. Yes, good. Goji, are you still in your match? Still a couple ones going. Must be some laggy games too. It's it's classic. It's the Total War experience. It's the Total War experience indeed. But Vampire Counts are a pretty good faction. They are. They are a pretty good faction. In Dom, they're a little bit weaker now. They did have some nerfs. I would imagine in Land Battle though, like Vampire Counts are very, very polarizing. They're kind of like there's matchups where they just crush you and there's matchups where they really suck. I was going to play today, but my hand is, is really acting up on me. Um, so, yeah, I'll definitely play in more tournaments coming up. I played in a couple uh, of this last season, but, yeah, we'll play more. Nice to see some old school tourneys from now. Yeah, no, for sure. It's our roots, you know. It's where we came from. So it's good to get back to our roots every now and then. Hey, out of region, it's all good, man. You got dwarfed. Well, it happens. And even if you lost your game out of region, you can still come back in and, and qualify by going 3-1. and one. So if you win the rest of your games and your opponent continues to do well, your chances are pretty damn good. So don't give up, brother. Don't give up. Thanks for the advice. Appreciate it. The vampire question was mostly focused on lizardmen and dragons. Yeah, yeah. Against against uh, dragons, um, the, the zombie dragon, I mean, it's tough against elves because against high elves, if you go with a big monster lord in the sky, they can bring Tempest. And they could, their dragons will bully you. Like Imric plus like a Tempest caster with Apotheosis will probably wreck you in the air pretty badly. Um, elves in land battle historically, like Dark Elves and High Elves, have both been decent against the Vampire Counts. I would imagine I'd have to go back and look. You could honestly probably look up some of my Warhammer 2 replays and, and see like those matchups and tournaments. Oh, you won, but it was a drag. It was rough. Okay, got it. Yeah. Ah, oh, Lucina, no worries. We're hanging out. It's it's what I'm gonna do is I'll play. In the next rounds, I'll just play some ladder in between. Because um, I can play a couple games. I just didn't want to have to play up to six games with my hands being messed up. So, But I can play a couple. So we're almost there. Thanks for keeping the flame of hope alive. So yeah, you know, I, I just love the Warhammer universe, man. I, I love Warhammer Fantasy. It, it's uh, rapidly become my favorite, like one of my favorite IPs. Like I, I just love Warhammer Fantasy. So even though Total War and CA have done a lot of haggard shit and failed in many ways... Um, you know, the, the universe keeps it alive for me. And just seeing these cool characters that I really just love and, you know, I'm painting them on tabletop. It, it's what keeps my interest going for sure. Yeah. Like all, like last night I was sitting in my garage, um, listening to the Injustice for All great album and, uh, just, just painting some Warriors of Chaos. And I was like, all right, we gotta, we gotta have a tourney tomorrow. We gotta do it. You know, it's, uh, yeah, just fun. Save my hands for the dreaded AOE FFA. So those things are serious. They are serious. All right, so looking at the old brackets, let's see how we're looking here. Scrolling down. All right, couple matches. We got Catholic playing versus Pigman. 
Gojira. Gojira, I'm not surprised. He has he has a, a pretty fun reputation of taking 10 years to build his army, so I suspect they probably took some time in the army building screen. Uh, players have 45 minutes per round, and then if they don't finish, they get an automatic draw. So currently, as it stands, we started at 11, so they have 13 minutes left to finish their game, so it should be pretty doable. Um, and then Yumaiz and Slade. Both of these guys are pretty, pretty veteran players, so I would imagine that they'll probably be wrapping up here shortly. Yeah. Classic FFA at the end. We could do that, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, tomorrow we have Age of Empires. Yeah, tomorrow we have Age of Empires. And it's going to be a, uh, a good old FFA stream. It'll be fun. Yeah, so how this tournament works is you declare what faction you want to play beforehand, and that's who you play the entire time. So that's all you get. Um, that's all you get. Are there any specific rules for land battles? Yeah, so if you go to, let me show you guys what that looks like. So it might look a little bit daunting, but it's really not too bad. Let me pull this up here. All right, so going to the tournament. So you'll see here, we have all the rules. So if you just click here, uh, we're using what's called the fruit rules. It's very similar to the rule set that Aerocrastic did back in the day and all those boys for our tournaments, but it basically just has like army limits and, and has specific, I mean, you don't, Really, you can just go down and look at your specific army. So let me scroll down here and see if I can find this. Yeah, there you go. So you can see like limitations on units and how many you're allowed to bring. It's a very, very nice put together rule set. So if you have any questions, you just cross review your army with that while you're building it and you know you go from there. Yeah, fruit rules, yes. How's it going, Duff? Hope you're doing well. Is this a faction war? No, I will do another faction war though soon. I wanted to do a classic one and um, I was almost thinking about doing it this weekend, but dude, Nothing, nothing like, uh, I feel like you see the worst of humanity when you fly in planes, especially, oh my God, like long plane flights. Jesus, dude. Oh my God. I, so the flight from California to Poland is about 11 hours. Um, or to, I, I often lay over in Germany or France when I travel to Poland and God, man, you just see the worst of humanity on those plane flights. It's just like, oh God, the horror stories, man, you know? <laughs> Oh, man. Pwn says I have $50 in top winning the tournament. Oh, no worries, man. You just... Goji, how can your game take so long, dude? Land battles take like five minutes. Was this just like a knockdown drag out battle or what? It must have been. It must have been. I got to hear the story, though. You never see session entitlement. I know. It's rough. Oh, it's rough. I got some horror stories from this, from this last one. You less... Yeah, no... Like flying, yeah, US, I think the worst airlines experience I've ever had was on a Spirit Airlines, which is like the cheapest, shittiest airlines in, in America. Granted, I don't know, like the thing about like flying to Europe, I find that the the Polish airlines are amazing. Like the the, the staff and like the accommodations are really good. Um, but in general, like on longer flights, it just brings the worst out of people, you know? Just got like stinky feet like up on your, you know? Up, up behind you up uh you know on the chair and just like among other things you know those are the flights when you do a lord of the rings bench yeah absolutely yeah spirit is the worst yeah spirit is like a meme in itself and that was a short flight too that was just like a couple states over i'll never fly spirit again one and done i know you're getting too close to home yeah, there's some there's some good airlines. The Polish Airlines is great though. A lot. They were really, really good. Okay. So I think we got one game going here. Let me make sure nobody wants to drop before we get to the next round. If you do want to drop, make sure to shoot me a message. It helps out. It helps us keep things nice and smooth. And um yeah. So Goji, you need to report your score, dude. Come on now. Let me message you. Report it. Report it. <laughs> Come on, Goji, you of all people. Uh, Happy New Year's. Here's another great year of streams. Oh, dude, the, the good times are going to be coming, for sure. You can get to Salt Lake to LA for $40 in Spirit Airlines. Yeah, exactly. That's what you get what you're paying for, you know? You get what you're paying for. Absolutely. I don't uh, I don't put the factions. You, you do. You put the factions, Goji. Yeah. None of them are going to feed into the stats. You don't need to worry. You put the factions you play. Just Just, yeah, do all that. <laughs> that spirits thing this will be uncomfortable physically and emotionally but half the price of a better airline yeah i don't know i don't know what it, what is it about spirit airlines that sucks so bad you know I, I it was hard to put my finger on it 
Yeah, Poland was fun. We went to the Old Town Warsaw for New Year's. We feasted. We ate a lot of good food. It was um, it was a great time. Yeah, it was a great time. Okay, let's do this. Do it. Put factions. Goji's struggling to figure it out. He'll get it eventually. And then we have Catholic versus the Pig Man. Let me make sure they're actually like uh, Catholic. You guys playing? Okay, messaging him. And Goji, you're the last one, Goji. Come on. You can do it. I believe in you. <laughs> Come on, Goji. I believe it. It's so easy. <laughs> you just punch in your score. Okay, let's see if he can get it. I'm refreshing, and then we're going to move on to the next round. You, you truly live up to your name. Yes, it's true. Did you get it? Come on, man. Don't disappoint me here. I believe in you. Oh, he did it. That's, that's my boy. Okay, advancing the Swiss. Here we go. Going to the next round. Round two, baby. Fight. Let's get it. Sorry for the downtime. We'll play some games in between to kind of fill it out. And here we are. Yeah, we, hey, we, we made it. We made it before the round. Okay, did the brackets get screwed up? Oh my God, please no. Please no. Oh no. What's going on on the website? Come on, you can do it. It's like lagging. I'm going to be so damn sad if this gets screwed up. You guys have no idea. Come on, website. Okay, the brackets are not appearing for me. Hopefully, they'll appear for some of you guys. Um, huh. Okay, oh, they, they worked. They just took a little bit of time to load. That gave me some anxiety. I was like, oh, God. Charx versus Berserk. That's a pretty heavyweight fight, and they both lost round one as well. Okay, Charx was our uh, faction war winner. You know what? We got our boy, um, Human Boy here. He's been he's been certainly doing some good work by the old land battles over the years. Let's give him uh, let's give him a rep. So let's find Human Boy. And if you guys haven't seen his channel, he uh, covers exclusively land battles. So you can check him out over there if you guys got an itch for the old school. He does a great job with all that. So we will find him. All right. So we're gonna cast the game between these two mighty champions here. Okay, it worked. It worked. I was just a little bit nervous there. All right. So Skaven versus. Demons of Chaos? Wow, that's an interesting one. I, you know, I, I haven't seen much Demons of Chaos in land battles. Yeah, I can draw from old experiences with some of these other factions, but not so much with the old demons. Here we go, man. Yes, yes. Give the rats. We're giving the rats some love. Yeah, the rats are here. They're going to be doing it. Spirit feels like a difference between Lexus and Toyota. They're both the same cars, but Lexus has extra finish and polish. Oh, okay, fair play. Fair play. Yeah, it's going to be Skaven versus uh, Demons of Chaos, which uh, I would imagine demons just go super wide here, right? Like, you you would probably go, like, mass play... Definitely not Demonettes or Bloodletters. They're both going to be terrible against Skaven. You would probably go with mass Plague Bearers, um, Blues... Plague Bearers, Blues, maybe some Pinks, and Nurglings would also be an ideal infantry choice with Flesh Hounds and Screamers would be my go-to. Um, screamers would be able to, you know deal with bigger threats and rat ogres and things like that, um, potentially. And then you flesh hounds are just really, really good for diving and they can nibble on a lot of different things. Uh, that would probably be my build. I'd probably go like mass plague bearers with the uh, blues in the secondary, uh, flesh hounds, maybe a couple nurglings in Vanguard. And uh, from there, some furies, screamers, flesh hounds, sorts of things like that. And for a caster, you could do a couple different things. You could actually go with the Slanesh Herald and, and spam spells. To give all your army melee attack, if you're going super wide like that, that would be really good. Using Blissful Rapture, I think that would be a good army comp. But again, you can also cheese Skaven with single entities. You could go like double Nurgle Soul Grinder and, you know, bombard them and things like that. But Skaven do have good artillery. They can bring Warp Lightning Cannon, Gisales, you know, so they're not helpless against that playstyle. Especially if they just bring like Natty Bubos. Like they can just sit there and, and wear them down. So playing S tier rats for the easy wins. Rats are, rats are interesting. I, I think Skaven are a bit tricky to play. You know, they're not easy to play. They kind of feel like the Empire in many ways. Like, you don't have, like, the most stalwart infantry lines. So a bit of work to keep those guys going. Yeah, Soul Grinders. Yeah, I think a couple Nurgle Soul Grinders can do work. It depends. Although the thing is, Soul Grinders of Nurgle, yeah, they're a little bit too much of a liability against Skaven, I think. With the Warp Lightning Cannon, like, it could Zap Zap Cannon will shut them down pretty hard, as will the uh, Gisales. Should be fun. <clears throat> yeah. Yes, Gaben can Ward Ascension this too. They can use the uh, the Plague Furnace and 
You can bring Skrulk and use his Rod of Corruption for a little bit of AoE damage. Can be pretty badass. There's a bunch of ways. There's a bunch of ways to do it. Skaven are very good in land battles at this time. Ah, I see. Okay. I always feel like Skaven are just awesome. They're so fun to play. So fun to play. Very rewarding. When you win with Skaven, it feels pretty good. More so in land battle. And Dom, Skaven have had some mixed success. I mean, ever since the power grab was nerfed, they, they haven't been quite as uh, quite as good as they once were. But, you know, now they're a little bit more rewarding when you actually win with them. So, all right. So, wait, what? Oh, for a second, I thought there was no caster. I was like, no, human boy, don't do it. It's a trap. Oh, I guess I forgot about Plague Toads, too. Wow, look at this army. So, we got Plague Toads mixed in with the... Um, Mixed in with the big... Wow, he's got the Arwar Keeper of Secrets. Holy shit. Against Skaven? That's some wildness. Yeah, Globes are great. I mean, Globes, magic damage against demons is always good. And they're pretty solid against light armor too. So they can they, they can pound down all these targets. They're good against heavy armor as well. But they were nerfed a couple patches ago. So they're not what they used to be. But Queek Headtaker is a very bold strategy against the demons. I mean, his whole armor piercing kit is going to be relatively, um, you know... Relatively wasted against these guys, unless he can find his way to the old uh, motorcycle of corn. That is, and here it is. Yeah, Queek is a Queek is a wild pick, but you know what? He's going out on a shield. It's going to be quite a bit of fun. Um, checking with these players here. All right, just looking, seeing if we have any buy rounds. And somebody said there, uh, TBD means I'm sitting in this round. Yes. So checking this. Got one point. Sorry, guys, doing a little bit of admin work, so I did minimize for a second. Perfect. All right, should be all good. So, ladies and gentlemen, coming in from the forces of the demons of chaos, it is going to be Peg Pegos here. I think is what the name is. Yeah. So, front line is going to be Nurglings. Nurglings trade adequately well into Clan Rats. They, they do their thing. Secondary rows going to be Blues, and the Nurglings are going to be stacked upon by the Plague Toads, which are good. They have mass, they have a bonus horse infantry, they can deal with most of these Skaven troopers. So Plague Monks, Clan Rats, whatever. Plague Toads will be able to feast on them, and they also have enough mass to push through and get onto the weapons teams if they want to. On top of that, we do have the big, uh, the big in, the Marquis of Masochism. So this is the Arwar Keeper of Secrets, which against Human Boy's build, let's see. So Human Boy does have uh, plenty of gutter runners, which will wreck that thing pretty badly, as well as a Warp Lightning Cannon. So I can't help but think that this Keeper of Secrets is going to be in a little bit of danger, but we'll have to see how that plays out. It's a very fast unit. It does have 80 speed. So with proper juking, you can dodge artillery, but man, it is a not an easy thing to pull off. On top of that, we do have a Herald of Slanesh. So I was right about that. The Herald of Slanesh, I think, is a very good choice. Because you could spam these spells, so although they're expensive spells, but nonetheless, it will give your entire army melee attack, unless he cut that passive, which it looks like he did. Interesting. So completely different than I had uh, speculated, but I figured a wide demon's army would really benefit from the melee attack, but it looks like it's going to be more expensive. Uh, a snare as well as slicing shards. Okay, so slicing shards is a nice tool against like static positions. So if the Skaven are sitting there with like a warp lightning cannon, if the Herald of Slanesh can get back there and drop this on them, it can really do some huge damage. On top of that, we do have the Motorcycle of Corn as well as Flesh Hounds on the other side, and that is going to be it for the Demons of Chaos. Now for the old rats, Human Boy, our, uh, our local Skaven champion here, going to be on with the Gutter Runners and Night Runners, very good against Demons. They do adequate damage against Light Armor, they're maneuverable, hard to chase down, can do some great kiting and wear down those Demons on the advance. And even in the later games can be used to poke down Plague Toads, for example, or can be used to take down the Marquis of Masochism. Queek is, uh, in my opinion, 100% a meme here. You know, it will be okay at fighting in the front line, but doesn't have any, like, like Skrull could probably just be better. Um, a, a multitude of the other Skaven characters would probably be better, but, you know, he's really cool. And, um, yeah, he can wear down infantry, and if you can find that Herald, he might do okay. Um, the Herald, though, still has good AP and good combat stats, so a little bit tough. In the back, we got Poison Wing, Globideers, Eshin Sorcerers, going to be throwing Ninja Stars, which, ironically, will be not terrible against the big Marquis of Masochism. And we have Armor of Darkness, which will give some armor to the front line Skaven, which probably will be used on Plague Monks, I would imagine which there are a couple in the front line, and yeah, it should be great. Warp Lightning Cannon with a couple Wolf Doggos in the back, and that is going to be that. So Warp Lightning Cannon immediately going to be training its sights onto the Herald, which um, is on foot. I don't know if the Demons of Chaos player knows that that's a foot Herald, so the Warp Lightning Cannon probably won't do that much damage. Nonetheless, it should probably be switched on to the Marquis of Masochism. And look at this! Oh, is that going to be a snare coming down? So we do see Night Runners getting caught pretty quickly by the Big Demon as well as Flesh Hounds, but immediately Human Boy does move up the Clan Rats with Spears and is able to get a beautiful Globe and Ear Volley. Really, really nice. Hits the Marquis of Masochism as well as those Flesh Hounds, 
and immediately you can see the big demons are getting punished pretty badly here on the far side yes one night runner is taking a little bit of damage it might get routed off the battlefield but overall the rats should be okay we have skaven slaves throwing pebbles rat ogres being sent in and the demon armies are going to be colliding into the battle lines very very quickly here it's now nerglings versus rat ogres and what you want to do with the blues is get them shooting at the ogres and or the gutter runners if you can and they seem to be doing pretty good damage plague monks will trade well in the front line granted the problem with plague monks in this matchup is they do have physical resist and that's their one of their main defensive attributes and demons do do a ton of uh, magic damage so a little bit tricky for those bad boys Plague Monk's trying to hold it down to the front line, getting mowed down a little bit, but Human Boy's getting some really, really good cost-effective poke here with his Skirmishers. You can see his Gutter Runners and Night Runners are able to wear down a couple of the Advancing Demons. Rat Ogres holding back quite a few units here. Granted, Flesh Hounds uh, should be able to win against the Rat Ogres in these kind of numbers, right? It's like Nurglings, Flesh Hounds, and Plague Toad, so the Rat Ogres going to be living up to their name here. Meanwhile, Queek being an absolute Chad in the front line, battling it out with these Demon units, and, uh, you know, he's doing his thing. He's alive. He's not dead yet. Yes, yes. Oh, Queek just got punted out of the battle there by that Plague Toad. I'm sure he'll be back in greater numbers at some point or other. On the far side, we have the Marquis of Masochism, classic Haggard Greater Demons. You gotta love them. Uh, you know, probably should just turn and fight at this point. Currently, the Marquis of Masochism is trying to get away, but it is being punished by these Rat Ogres. And uh, yeah, just turn and fight. See if you can break those Ogres. Also, a little bit of Skaven Skirmishers as the Demons do get a little bit of momentum here. We see the Nurglings busting through the front line. Poison Wing Globideers getting hunted, and the Toads need to definitely, definitely get back here and shut down these uh, range units. So the Marquis of Masochism can live, and it looks like it is able to escape right here as the Marquis is going to be fleeing the scene. Nice catch here by the Demons of Chaos. In the backfield, it looks like the Summon Fury unit was sent back to the Warp Lightning Cannon. So that's going to be a big value grab of probably a thousand plus gold here for the Demons of Chaos. Although Human Boy does have some Wolf Rats right here. So the Wolf Rats might be able to kind of clear those Chaos Furies off. If that Warp Lightning Cannon can stabilize, that's going to be pretty massive. That's a consistent source of anti-large magic damage against, you know, Toads, Marquis of Masochism, all these different units but looking around the scaven front line is looking pretty flimsy we're not seeing anything here pretty much empty here nothing here and the demons of chaos might find a way to get into the backfield as we do see the value starting to come back we see the demons of chaos creeping up they're only down by 600 classic scaven and uh you know old queek is not really doing a whole lot he's probably up to a couple hundred value yeah only 100 value so far is rough like if scroll was here for example you would have seen labor bubonicus just blasting in probably helping finish off this unit the rod of corruption would clear out infantry um, he has magic damage himself would be very very useful kind of uh, cleaving away in the front lines But overall the demons of chaos appear to be doing pretty well for themselves as they are getting that momentum back against the Skaven Value is within 400 points right now Route ogres and skirmishers in the backfield here fighting you have to remember when you look at value though uh, One thing that the value meter doesn't take into account is the fact that crumbling is a thing or disintegrating right? So it doesn't like take into account crumbling units for the Skaven So the Skaven value leads probably a little bit better than it would appear and look at this, the Herald of Slanesh battling it out with the Eshin Sorcerer. And the Eshin Sorcerer uh, is a respectable fighter, not terrible. Let's have 35 and 40 for combat stats. And that Herald of Slanesh needs to be saved. The thing is, if you're the Demons of Chaos player, oh, look at that, the Fear of Aramar. I love that. Using the leadership uh, scroll on the Herald is going to be tanking its leadership into disintegration. And for demons, disintegrating is an obscene amount of damage. What a power play there by Human Boy. Yes, yes, really, really good. And now we're going to be seeing the Herald of Slanesh going down, which is potentially going to be giving the Skaven a uh, pretty good fighting chance here. That will hurt the leadership of this demon army, potentially leading to some crumbling. In the backfield here, we do see Rad Ogres duking it out with the Flesh Hounds of Corn and also the Poison Wing Globed Ears. Maybe going to be able to stabilize here. As far as the demons go, looking around, um, they still have some unit blobs back here, but yeah, a couple blues. But, you know, ironically, Queek is going to be tough, right? Queek is going to be kind of tough to kill from any of these demon units. Granted, Plague Toads are good against him. And we still do, still do see the Marquis of Masochism. The Skaven could definitely lose this game if the Marquis of Masochism can find a way to survive and wear down all the range units. If this thing can just cycle charge and, and kind of do as it pleases without range units poking it, it's going to be able to probably route off a ton of the Skaven army. So fleeing is the Marquis of Masochism. Going to be scurrying away. Yes, yes. We got the Blues hunting down the Globideers with a couple of Flesh Hounds chasing and more Blues on this side. Going to be hunting through the Clan Rats. And this very, very pitch battle. Bounce power is pretty close to even. It's right there in the middle. The Marquis of Masochism looking a little bit beat up, but Chad Queek Headtaker still fighting it out with the Nurglings. He's found, finally found an opponent his size over here, and, uh, you know, he's enjoying it. Up to 225 value, and, you know, he's still an armored character, which might be tough to kill for the Blues and various other pieces. Marquis of Masochism bouncing around, terror routing whatever it can, and uh, the Skaven have also rallied over here, so we see a fair amount of Skaven units that have kind of come back here, including the Eshin Sorcerer, which I would imagine Human Boy still has good wins of magic, so he's probably going to be able to use the Eshin Sorcerer, which is what he's doing right now, to move over and throw Ninja Stars using the um, Warp Stars. 
to wear down the big demon. If you can kill the Marquis with a couple ninja stars, that would definitely, definitely massively change the balance of power out. So Queek has gotten the kill. Ooh, that's actually tough too. The Motorcycle of Corn is pretty damn strong. Um, it does have the Gore Feast ability, so it can heal in combat, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's a decent little heal. So the demons need to regroup, get their blues in the front, and not engage the uh, Blood Shrine by itself. This is going to be a tough one for old Queek. It's going to be tough. But if Queek can get those isolated engagements, take down the Blood Shrine, you know, maybe outduel the Marquis of Masochism, which is certainly not easy, <clears throat> maybe he's going to be able to pull one out. And this thing does have some healing as well. Um, if there's routing units nearby, yeah. So it increases by each uh, in range of leadership wavering or lower, yeah. So it can heal. It can heal. We're going to see, yep, it's healing right now. Look at that. So it's uh, it's going up a little bit. You can see it's HP going. If that thing starts healing a lot, that's going to be very bad for this Gaiman. That big terror route centerpiece is going to be brutal. So here comes the blues. Plague Monk's forming ranks. Queek Headtaker ready to lead his army to glory. Globedeer still in the backfield. Uh, going to do a little bit of friendly fire damage, but Globedeers will be excellent against the Plague Toads as well as the Blues, if it can get those engagements. Marquee of Masochism waiting in the shadows. Demons are going to be engaging with everything else, and the Marquee of Masochism is going to be pulled into the fourth quarter. Queek Headtaker getting a good engagement here, getting his nice armor-piercing attacks into the Cornate Motorcycle, which is uh, currently shaken at 31 leadership. So, man, uh, I think my favorite play that we've had today was that damn scroll. That scroll was so cool. Lowering the leadership of the Demon character to tank its leadership to negative. That's a pretty MLG tactic from this game and truly shows that this man knows his rats. So how's old Queek doing? Yep, he's trapped in a melee fight. Marquis of Masochism's coming in with a steel chair, 1400 HP. Globedeers are shut down. Skaven Army's looking to be in a little bit of trouble, ladies and gentlemen, but the Ninja Stars from the Eshin Sorcerer nail the Marquis of Masochism, which is shaken at 15 leadership. Oh my God, but it's healing right now. It's healing up, and if it can get a tear out on the Eshin Sorcerer and then break it from there, that could be GG from there, because the Cornate Motorcycle plus like the Demonic Infantry probably will be able to outmuscle Queek. Currently, the Marquis of Masochism is hitting at 600 leadership. The Eshin Sorcerer does get beaten down. He's broken, and that probably will be the end of the game. I think that the Marquis of Masochism is going to be able to chase down the Sorcerer right now, run it off. Although, wait, there's Disintegration. Oh, my God, the Unstable actually went off. Wow, that's really big. We're going to see if this thing can stabilize. Probably not. Oh, my God, it stabilizes at one leadership. It comes back. I was going to say, if that thing actually dies, Queek might have an opportunity to grind this fight out. It's tough, though. It's very, very tough. I'm um, looking around. Skaven do get some skirmishers back. We have the Night Runners making their way back to the battlefield. And the old Marquis of Masochism. Oh, man. It's, it's just stabilizing at two leadership right now. That is so incredibly close. That is so incredibly close. Cleaving away. Eshin Sorcerer being taken off to the Shadow Realm. And uh, yeah, man. There you go. It's going to be at the end of this little rat. And look at the healing from the, uh, I believe it's called the Fe Scent of Fear or Feasting on Fear is what it is. Yeah. So he's able to heal up. It's not a big heal, but every little bit matters. Queek Headtaker, if he can, you know, win his duel against the Blood Shrine, that's going to be pretty good. The problem with Queek is he's not immune to psychology. So if Queek does get terror routed by the Marquis of Masochism, that's just going to be GG, right? So if he's, like, beat up enough, uh, then it's going to be... The Marquis is just going to come in and terror out him instantly. So if you get Queek down to, like, 25% and then just rear charge him with the Marquis of Masochism, that will probably be the end of the game for Skaven. It looks like the Demons of Chaos have just barely pulled this one out. What a great scrap. GG well played. And, uh, you know, you did it. You did it. I think human voice has came in bad back. I think if you just brought anyone other than Queek, if you brought like Skrulk or a Plague Furnace or, um, you know, a Grace here on a Bell, I think you could have won that game. Just Queek is just so haggard. <laughs> he's so haggard in that matchup. Oh, but he's so cool. Look at him. Look at his little rat face. What a great game, dude. And I'm impressed with the Demons of Chaos player too. The fact that he was able to keep that Marquee alive, that's very impressive. Skaven with all their skirmishers, very good at poking that. And uh, the Ninja Star of Doom was... I love the Ninja Star, too. The Eshin Sorcerer was fun. He got 1,500 value, too. Yeah, 1,500 value ain't bad. It ain't bad. All right, so checking here, doing a little bit of admin work. Um, yes. Yes, started. Okay, perfect, perfect. And outstanding. So, yeah, Marquis was awesome. Only 900 value, but it was really fun to see that thing in action. Lucy is a friend, so we handshook. Oh, so you guys both brought a meme. So your opponent's meme was the uh, was the marquee, and you brought you brought Queek. Okay, fair play. So you guys both kind of brought something a little bit janky and off meta. I like that. I respect that. That's cool. All right, so here we are, and let us get it. Let us get it. So as far as the round goes, we're making some good progress. Uh, in order to pass the time, I will queue up for a land battle myself. Could do an FFA match, but those tend to take some time. Um, hmm. Let's see here. So let's try to pull. Uh, next battle. 
All right, so you guys can vote. We'll do a really quick vote. Whatever you guys vote on, we'll do this to pass the time until the next round starts. This one is going much quicker than the last round, but even still. Even still. So how are we looking? Um, yeah, so still a handful of games to be finished. Still a handful. Okay, so it looks like most of you guys want the land battle, so we'll queue up for that real quick. Uh, ranked max matching. Go. <clears throat> yeah, the rest of your army is legit besides Squeak. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Your army looked good. Rando, thank you for the donation. I missed that during the game. Thank you, man. I hope you're doing well, and I hope you're excited for the old world. It's going to be quite a bit of fun. I know we were chatting some uh, tabletop. Rando, thank you, thank you, man. Greatly appreciate that. How did you guys not vote for FFA? Well, there was only 82 votes, so it wasn't that many. It wasn't that many. What do we want to play? We could play a little bit of Coast. Coast could be fun. It depends on the map, I guess. Any excuse I can find to use like artillery or gun line is going to be... Uh, oh, we're facing Gotrek Starbreaker, huh? The I believe he was the King of the Dwarves during the uh, War of the Beard. So we want a fast game. So let's do some like Unga Bunga. Um, now, who do we want a Cowabunga with here? My opponent is locked in an army already. Tomb Kings could be very fun. You know what? Um, let's do a little bit of Tomb Kings. Yeah, you know what? Tomb Kings are just so rad. Let's fire off the Tomb Kings here. We're on Prague. Okay, fairly open map. Oh, I should have known. He's he's Gotrek. Okay, Dwarves are very good against Tomb Kings. I don't know how we're going to win this, but we're going to give it a good college try. The scroll play was really awesome. Yeah, it was. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, do this and get the screen blocker up. If, if you guys could keep me appraised on the um, the rounds, that would be greatly appreciated. And from there, we can uh, we can figure it out. All right, so let's go ahead and get you guys. Um, if we put you on this option. Okay. I'm going to try like a weird strategy that I think can work. It's going to take a bit of effort, but I think I think I have some ideas about this one. Okay. Looking fine. And then we will get a couple of you guys. And for the Lord choice, for today's disappearing act, we shall bring... Hmm. Hmm. Probably my boy here, and he can also be on this. Yeah, that lore magic isn't like particularly useful. I guess it's not terrible either. Yeah, so let's actually go with you. Tomb Kings versus Dwarfs is a tough matchup, it, if, if memory serves. I don't think too much has changed here, but it was um, it was always kind of a tricksy one. Yeah, I don't know about that. We're going to do a little bit of this. Okay. Feeling pretty good about the build so far. I think it's going to be very fun. Don't need that. Okay. And now for the main line... Let's get you guys and you. Get a lot of these. And then we want to get some of these for a little bit of skirmish. Ushapti, Ushapti can do well too in this matchup, I feel. Also, spamming Screaming Meme Catapults could be funny. Um, I, think, I think this is the direction we want to go, though, here. Yeah, I think this is the direction we want to go. All right. Good luck, have fun to my opponent. Let's see how this uh, this one works out. Oh, I almost made a huge mistake here. That would have been very bronze if I had done that. Would have been some bronze league action. And uh, cool. All right, good luck, have fun. Let's see how this goes. Probably going to get wrecked. Double Darude Sandstorm? Dude, how, how did you know, Pwn? I had a screen blocker up. How did you know? The Darude Sandstorm is coming. Yeah, you're here for land battles. I know, it's back, man. We're having some fun. So, man, the round is almost over now, too. This is Hopefully, this will be a quick game. Worst case, I'll start the next round and uh, jump in there. Now we're going to pump up those. They're going to pump those Dwarven legs, they are. Hey, good job, Goji. Nice win, dude. Nice win. Okay, a couple of games still going. It looks like there's three matches. Uh, worst case, I'll, I'll just leave early. It's, it's not a huge deal. We'll give our opponent the dub if, uh, if, that, if that happens. I don't want to keep the whole tournament waiting just for this. Although I can advance and there will be some time for army picks. I'll just cast Goji's game next because I know he'll take 10 minutes to pick his army. So should be fine. <clears throat> should be fine. 
All right, so for the army, we went with kind of an old school kind of style. I don't know if it's still any good, but it's going to look awesome. Okay, okay. Dude, I'm so excited to play Tomb Kings in the old World Tabletop game. I'm so excited. Like, they're just such a, a badass faction thematically. They're so cool. So we went with Katep um, with the double Darude Sandstorm. We got you guys here, so probably going to get pounded by some cannonballs. And uh, we got the double Tomb Scorpion over there for uh, five and six. Okay, and let's get you out here and you out here as well. Looking pretty good. Shopti chilling in the back, and uh, Carrion can be in the back corner. All right, not to rush you, my friend, but, you know, got a tournament going on. I love Tomb Kings. I love Tomb Kings. They're just so cool. <clears throat> Tomb Scorpions, there was a time when this build was meta. You basically use the double chariot Necrotex to disrupt the dwarves with, with healing on Tomb Scorpions. Tomb Scorpions are really haggard. Um, I, I always find that they get like 300 value and do nothing, but they look cool as hell and they have Vanguard. So is there enough uh, AP in this build? We're about to find out. We're about to find out. All right. So, oh shit. I didn't even think of that. Oh, oh yeah, baby. <laughs> Let's go. Still got it. All right. Let's get it. All right. Darud. Oh yeah. Talk about a freebie. Hey, I have some carrying though. So we're not completely helpless here. So Kotap's going to run away. Tomb Scorpions. Oh, look at the Vanguard. Oh, that's so funny. They are Bugman's Rangers, so that's, uh, that's that's good for us. So we need to get these carrying over. I didn't bring any, like, I should have brought, like, one Great Bow or something. You know, but the Tomb Scorpions are doing some pretty good work here. Um, we do have this, so let's go ahead and uh, save it. We don't need it right now. All right, so we're going to get the Necrotex back, run them this way, and let's go ahead and circle you guys up like so. Um, but, yeah, so far that's pretty good little fight for us. Let's pull you around the back, see if we can get on this. And, um, yeah, Tomb Scorpion, just keep duking it out here. Unfortunately, one of our Necrotex is getting beaten up. We're going to see if we can do a little something-something. Let's pull around the backside. All right. And the Haggard Vanguard has done it. Man, yeah, that shooting on that Necrotech really hurts, though. I'm, I'm pretty bummed about that. So here comes the Carrion. This this one Carrion's going to have to do, like, all the all the heavy lifting here, to be honest. All right. So let's get you around the back. And uh, in the meantime, you can engage here. Go eat those blasting charges like a champ. Go eat those blasting charges. And uh, you around the back. You around the back. And Necrotex can kind of cruise... And hopefully we can route off these damn Bugman's Rangers at some point or other. Yeah, so the Blasting Charges are going to be very disgusting against us. It's going to be very, very rough. But we are going to get in on a couple of these units. And uh, DJ Kotep is there. He's not defending his cannon, so that's going to be a freebie. And uh, the Necrotex are going to get into the tree line. That's what we want. All right, so where's that carrying at? Let's come over here and chase these ones down. Tomb Scorpions and company should get the job done here. All right, so DJ Kotep's hiding in the bushes. And uh, we do get one cannon down. All right, so let's go get that other cannon if possible. You guys move back, move back. And that's going to be a ruin of uh, some sort of wrath, I would imagine. All right, so not time for the Druid Sandstorm yet. Um, this flank engagement going very well. We're able to get those Bugman's Rangers down. And now we are here in the backfield. Let's get you in the trees uh, to avoid that. And you come here. And then we can get you heading over this way. And DJ Kotep, these are just Dwarf Warriors. Um, but yeah, even still, we'll try and wear him down with the Darude. Yeah, we'll, we'll try and give it our best. All right. So how's this fight looking? Yeah, we're avoiding a lot of the Dwarf action. We're going to just sacrifice some of you guys to the Blasting Charges. And uh, excellent. Let's bring the Scorpions down here. Have you guys chase off those Ultars Raiders so we can get rid of the Mark. And the Darud Soul Skullstorm has, uh, has made contact. We've done some decent work here. So let's do another one. Wear those guys down. And we did manage to get both cannons offline. Somehow I'm still behind with the Bounce Power, which I feel like, yeah, I guess our infantry is getting a little bit smashed up. Yeah, our infantry is having a bit of a hard time. All right, how are we doing? We want to keep those Necrotex alive. Um, this one's very, very damaged. So let's see if we can get him away and at least use one of the restores. Come on, come on. Uh, DJ Kotep is in the fight. Okay, he's not doing bad. Perfect. So let's keep you here. We got the Tomb Scorpions in the backfield coming to party. And the Carrion are where? All right, so the Carrion need to chase this one down now. My opponent doing a really good job with his um, with his keeping his things alive. Man, if I had just brought a little bit of anti-air against those things, that would have been so good. All right, you guys pull here. Pull here. Um, keeping Homeboy in the tree. Keep him alive. Kotep able to break through here. Let's get you. And um, is there anything else I want to chase here? Not really. We can go just hunt down those blasting charges, try and get them off before they can do anything. And now we got the Tomb Scorpions in full effect here. All right. So I think we're in good shape. Blast from the past, it really is. I would say if I were to get like back into playing a lot of land battles, I'd probably try and main Tomb Kings. I don't know if they're good, but I just love the faction. Like their thematics are just so cool. Some ancient civilization, you know, rising from the rising from the sands, and yeah, it's just uh, it's it's so cool. All right, let's wait till they're more bunched up before we try anything here. Um, let's get you back. We want to keep both of these chariot characters alive. Okay, 
And let's get these warriors heading over this way. Um, this fighting's a little bit dicey here, but we do have Kepra Guard doing some good work. And the Tomb Scorpions and company. Yeah, he's, he's shooting Katep now, which is smart. Uh, Carrion, how are you doing? Yeah, hunting that down. So let's come back and chase this one now and uh, get you guys Katep hiding in the trees here. Yes, the evil tree camping. Let's go. So, yeah, nice Wrath of Rune right there. Um, Kepra Guard are wearing down a lot of the Dawi infantry, and we still have healing on the Tomb Scorpions. Plenty of that. And, you know, Tomb Scorpions are okay at grinding, for sure. So, all right. Where are they bunched up? Yeah, like right here. Let's go ahead and get you guys, like, here. Keep that. Get caught up in the trees. Get you guys engaged here. And that's going to be a Darude Sandstorm right there. Is there any more Darude Sandstorms I can drop? Let's go route these guys off. Yeah, just kind of hang out in the trees. And he's going to have to fly his other gyrocopter back here in a second. So when that one runs, we just chase down the other one. Tomb Scorpion's doing it. And let's go ahead and turn around and go after this guy again. Yeah, we just got to kind of use that one. Man, if I had brought two carrying, this game would just be much easier. Just the fact that I only brought one has been very punishing here. Come on, Tomb Scorpions. You can you can do it. I believe in you guys. The jankiest of jank. Uh, Kepra Guard's still duking it out. We do get a nice rear charge there. We got our Nehekara warriors, or horsemen still fighting, and the trees are our best friend right now. Like, 100%. 100%. Um, there's still a lot of Dowie infantry. This one has low ammo, so let's just chase the one that has good ammo for the rest of the game and let this one use the rest of its ammunition. Who shopped these summon? We saved for the fourth quarter. Um, by the way, how is the, um, how is the uh, attorney looking? Is the round still going? Is there anybody still playing? Can somebody check? All right, so let's go here, and then we can get you to um, just keep chasing these guys off. Tomb Guard Halberd's actually performing pretty well. I, I figured they would. Um, don't want to Sandstorm there, although here it's probably not a bad idea. Yeah, that's, a, that's actually a fair amount of units. Let's pull our Tomb Guard back for a second. Keep you guys in the trees here. Chase down that crew. Nice. Nice. We get the route. Hell yeah. That's what I'm talking about. One game left. Good. Okay. You guys laughed at my Tomb Scorpions. You guys were all laughing at them. All right, let's do a little restore on you. And um, just to get it off cooldown, we'll just restore these guys. You never know. These guys can crumble pretty quickly. So um, as long as Kotep can live in the bushes, then we'll be okay. All right, so you guys fight here. You guys fight here. Uh, let's go route you guys down. And we have that Ushapti summon for the fourth quarter. We do. All right, so he's going to go after characters and try and force me out of the trees. Still chasing that one. Okay, Kotep needs to keep juking. We do have a Sandstorm here. Um, how's that looking? Yeah, probably going to want to Sandstorm it. All right, so let's do that right there on those Dwarf Warriors. Get the Necrotex cruising here. Get these Halberds moving there to fight. And, uh, yeah, we just got to... We just got to... Hopefully, he'll run out of ammunition. That's the game plan. Carrion's still hunting very effectively. And the Druid Sandstorm there didn't do that much damage, unfortunately. But let's get... Uh, do we want to get the Chariot characters in there? I don't know. So let's tail with that Thane. See if we can bring him down. Cool. So that position is broken. Now we can rear charge in here. See if we could win that fight. I doubt it, but maybe... Carrion's still hunting. Yeah, the, these guys are getting beat up pretty good. Um, he's almost out of ammo on that one. If I could get one more set of restores off, that would be huge value, but I think I'm going to lose this guy. Probably going to lose the game in general, I think. He's just got a lot of stuff all over here. Those, like, characters, those dwarven characters are pretty menacing, and Kotep is almost dead. Tomb Scorpions are kind of getting bashed by these things, which I'm genuinely shocked about, but let's call in the Ushapti here. And do I have a restore? Yeah, a couple seconds I will. Come on, come on, come on, baby. Let's see if we can stabilize that one haggard one. Ugh. All right. So we got the restore off. The Ushapti summon's coming in. Carrion's still chasing. And uh, there it is. All right. So Ushapti on top of those. And we got that off. Let's go ahead and see if we can take down this thing. One gyro's almost out of ammo. We can get top Kotep to run over here. And let's use that big, big uh, nuke on that blob there. That should be pretty prime time. Give it to me, precious. Man, I just cannot hit this thing to save my life. Let's get in there. Hit him. There they go. All right. So did we get the Sandstorm? It did a little bit of damage. Ultimately, probably did more damage to my units than it did to theirs. Uh, Kotep's still hanging in there. Carrion's still chasing. Ushapti summon. Yeah, we just can't kill the Thane. He's just like a raid boss. Okay. What what unit is that back there, by the way? That is a, a Bugman's Ranger. So we can just... Yeah, we need to keep going after this guy. If Kotep dies, it's definitely going to be army losses. Come on, Team Scorpions. Come on. You can do it. Uh, Kotep in the trees. You have another sandstorm here. All right, let's do that. See if we can nail them. Tomb scorpions. Um, have they gotten that thane down yet? Dude, they just can't hit shit. They are just not hitting anything right now. All right, Kotsev can rear charge, but that's so dicey. It's so incredibly dicey. So a lot of those guys coming. Let's get our Nehekara horsemen coming in. Yeah, just one more, one more, um, one more carrying, and I think we're fine. Although maybe the tomb scorpions just suck ass. Maybe you guys were right. It's just like they're just like they don't seem to be able to kill the thing they're designed to kill, which is infantry. Come on, buddy. Like, how are you not killing those Thanes? 
They have like 800 HP and you're a bonus for infantry monster. Come on. Okay, so are they going to get the grind on? They're going to get it? Those The Thanes are still steady. The Chad Thanes. All right, so let's come in the back here. Do the rear charge. GG, well played. Great game for my opponent. Perfect time for the next round. So overall, probably... Well, I was fighting in the trees too, so I was taking a penalty. But yeah, Tomb Scorpions kind of sucked. Although they got that good ambush in the beginning, but that was pure luck. If I didn't get that ambush in the beginning, it would have been an even more crushing loss for me. Um, Necrotech sucked. Yeah, pretty much most of my my like elite core was bad. The Tomb Guard Halberds and Kepra Guard did okay. Carrion were useful. All that sort of good stuff. And perfect timing. So let's get that next round started. GG to my opponent. Really fun match. And here we are. All right, refreshing. Making sure there's no drops. Yeah, plus the, you probably need a more optimal build too. That was just not a very good build. I had a power fantasy about Tomb Scorpions actually killing armored infantry units, but it was uh, it was not meant to be. They are just not very good. Yeah, probably like a Cambrian War Sphinx would have been better. Yeah, Cambrian War Sphinx would have been nice. Okay, doesn't look like anybody's dropping, and we are ready. How, do, how does somebody have three points yet raised? Uh, that doesn't make sense. Okay, so they must have... How does that person have three points? No, that's his opponent score. Okay, so advancing the Swiss. Here we go. Let's get it, baby. Yes. Come, my minions. Rise. Rise. Okay, where are we at? All right. And the round is up. All right. So let me check this. Everyone, the round is live. Good luck. Have fun. Uh, let me link it in the Discord. You know what would have been really funny? It's like a mass screaming meme catapult build would have worked pretty well there. Good luck. Have fun. Tourney is live. Oh, that is the wrong section. That is the wrong section. All right. So where's the tournament? There it is. Where are you at, my friends? Can't, can't even figure out how to navigate my own Discord. <laughs> All right, next round is live. There it is. All right, so get your opponent. Let's have some fun. Let's find a game to cast. We got a lot of good ones. Yeah, melee shop D aren't bad. Yeah, they're okay. If you have enough of them, like a good critical mass, they can definitely do some overwhelming. They definitely can. All right, so matches, matches for the matches god. All right, so that, I think we just casted a... Oh, let's cast an Outer Region game. I think he's playing Zinj. So we'll cast that. He's one of our, you know, a great champion in Domination. We'll see how he does in the old land battle. Should be fun. Thank you guys all. Oh, is it Goji versus Outer Region? The Duel of Fates? Oh, hell yeah, man. Let's go. Greenskins versus Zinj on land battle. All right. All right, let's fire it off, man. Let's have some fun. I'm going to go grab some water, and we'll uh, get this next game going here. Checking to see that the brackets updated correctly. Okay. Yep, looking good. No drama, and I'll be right back. BRB. <laughs> Some good water, some good H2O, my friends. Let's continue the good times. Hope you're all doing well. Thanks for joining today. It's always good to be hanging out with the crew. One of the better, big advantages of um, coming back from uh, Europe is my time zones are all screwed up. So I actually wake up really early. I was up at like 7 a.m. today, 8 a.m. Yeah, so well, you guys will be getting earlier streams for the next couple weeks. Azag? Oh, Azag is, yeah, Azag's awesome. Spirit Leech is just always a great spell, and he's a pretty good gooning character. You have to be very careful with him, though. He's he's a little bit squishy, and Zinch does have Screamers and Blue Fire, which can do big damage against him, so... <coughs> Etiquette, I'm too weak. But Legend Legendary Lord is meta for the for the Greenskins? Oh, definitely going to be Azag, yeah. You could, like, honestly, in this matchup, you could bring Grimgore, too. Like, he's durable, uh, and, you know, can fight characters like Aeacold and fight Chaos 
Or you're just, this is totally like a Grimgore. I mean, not that he's good. I'm not saying Grimgore's good, but he, he could be usable in this situation. <clears throat> but yeah, Azag is very good. He's super fast, has a good lore of magic, um, decent fighter. You know, what's not to love? Awkward silence, I know. I know. A little bit of awkward silence is good. Grimgore meta into Warriors of Chaos. Yeah, I suspected it would be so. The thing is, in Dom, he's like, Grimgore's a little bit shittier because, you know. But in, in, in land battle, you're eventually going to have to fight him usually. So, like, you know, those those type of characters can shine a little bit more in land battle where it can become, uh, you know, very SE focused in the late game. Grimgore is the best. Yeah, yeah, he is. Outer region's really good, but Goji's also pretty strong. I played a couple games with Goji in the past few months, and I was very impressed. Um, he, he did very well. So we'll, we'll see how the old Goji does. Is Kairos banned? No, Kairos is playable. Is that something that, well, unless he's banned in fruit rules, because currently I'm just using fruit rules. There's no additional restrictions or anything like that. So yeah, you know what? I wouldn't hate Scarsnick either. Like rampaging is pretty brutal. Like if you could get like uh, a rampage on a powerful Zinch flying bird and bring it to its doom, I mean, that's a huge win. Um, but Scarsnick, yeah, he's got good HP too. Scarsnick's got like what, five, 6,000 HP? Huh, kind of an interesting idea, but Scarsnick would get his butt kicked by air cold too. So you got to watch out for that. <clears throat> All right. Yep. Pretty meta. It's going to be Azag. And oh yeah, that's just pure evil. <laughs> that Zeech build is pure evil. It's Kairos with a regrowth on the Mutilith Beast and oh, the Severed Claw. Man, Goji, did Goji bring enough missiles to deal with this build? I don't know. You might need more Daka. He's got a little bit of Daka. He's got the, uh, he's got the Rusty Errors as well as the Goblin Archer unit, but I don't know if he's got enough Daka to deal with this. Yeah. Some host ban Kairos. Well, we'll see if Kairos wins today. I saw a lot of good players sign up. A whole lot of good players. <clears throat> What's your favorite zombie movie? No, Evil Dead. Oh, well, you, you got my first hand. Evil Dead isn't necessarily zombies, though. I mean, kind of. Like, the Deadites are sort of like zombies, but they're more like demons. Um, favorite zombie movie? Oh, God. So you said movie, not TV show. Okay, so that makes it a little bit easier. Um, you know, growing up, I really enjoyed the, <clears throat> the one with... Um, Ving Rhames from like 2001 or 2002 where they where they get like the it's the remake of the original where they're trapped in the mall that one was fun but I don't know if that's my favorite no no that's not my favorite duh my favorite is 28 days later 28 days later is like the greatest zombie movie and 28 weeks later is so good also like I I remember like watching like most zombie movies I'm kind of like you know like the like uh um you know, a lot of the classic Romero and those type of movies, like, they don't get you, like, feeling that super, like, intense... I'm like, oh, you know, it, it's scary, but, like, when I was watching 28, 28 Days Later, there's some scenes in that movie that are just, like... Yeah, Dawn of the Dead is what it is, sorry. Um, but, man, like, that, that last scene in 28 Days Later, when he, like, breaks into the military compound to rescue his two, the two girls... And it's just like raining and there's like chaos and there's like terrifying zombies running around. Dude, it's so good. And 28, 28 weeks later, that scene when they go into the subways and it's like pitch black and he's there with his like sniper rifle looking through the night vision scope and like you don't know if anything's around. Holy shit. That scene is so scary. And uh, man, 28 days later and 28 weeks later are just straight up the best zombie movies in my opinion. Um, cause they're, they're like rage zombies. They're like fast. So they're not like, oh, I cannot run this thing. Uh, like these things are like as fast as you are and they don't get tired as easily. It's, it's so good. It's so good. <clears throat> the mansion scene in 28 days later. Yeah. Is the best scene in that genre and the soundtrack. Um, the soundtrack for 28 days later in that final scene, just full erection every time. It's so good. If you guys haven't seen it, go watch that. Go watch it. Okay, guys back to total war. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the Degenerate Armies of Zeech, led by none other than Outer Region. He's going to be with Chaos Warriors, which, of course, are resilient and will trade pretty well into a bunch of Savage units. Um, they, of course, have uh, magic damage. We got Aea Cold, Severed Claw, and the Mutilith Mortis Engine Beast with Kairos up in the sky. Going to be Blue Fire spamming characters and Azag, and then from there healing up the Mortis Engine, which is going to be very tough. Screamers, of course, are there to deal with Squigs and Big Cavalry. And that is that. Now for Goji, I think the way to beat the Zinch build is going to be super wide missiles, which he didn't really bring. Um, looks like he's going to get punished pretty badly by the old blue. And look at that, the Void Pendulum being used, which takes away his Winds of Magic from old Kairos. 
Yeah, like, here's the thing, guys. If, if Outer Region just kills the Goblin Archers, then he wins this game. I literally think there's no chance. There's no chance for Goji to, if they die. Because, like, that's the only thing that can put good damage on the Muty Beast and Spirit Leech. The Orc War Boy Biggins would be good in open field if they can isolate it, but they're not going to let that happen. The Severed Claw is going to be standing under the Mutalith Beast all day, and it's just going to be a, uh, a really, really bad time here. <clears throat> so, another blue fire going down into Azag, and Goji is going to be getting his surround here. So Goji coming around the back with the Savage Orc War Boys and the Forest Goblin Spider Riders. And uh, overall, it's just going to be tough, man. It's going to be an ugly one. Zinch moving forward, and the Rusty Errors... They, they need to kill this Mutalith Vortex Beast, and Goji needs to use some mass to protect it. This is like his lifeblood. If this unit goes down, it's just it's just straight up over. Um, it, I think that Outer Region probably knows this, and it's going to be flying over with Kairos as the uh, sh uh, Shrieking Sky Rays, a bunch of other units. Meanwhile, the Greenskins do get a decent little engagement here. We got the Crimson Killers! And talk about a badass unit. I mean, if anybody's going to be good against the Zinch front line, it'll be Crimson Killers. I mean, they, they for sure hit super hard against the armor. Uh, but Aeacold is here. That's the problem. Aeacold is going to melt them down pretty good. Now in the backfield, Rusty Air is getting karate chopped. We see an all-in dive here. But if Goji can find a way to drag down the Mutalith Beast while it's slightly overextended like this, a little bit away from the main army, maybe, maybe he can do a little something-something. There's other Goblin Archers coming online. Broken Tusk Mob is going to be creeping around the back. Old Gojira is coming in to do some battle. These ones look like they're going to be maneuvering this way as well. And the Wah goes down to the valley. Pure rage from the Greenskins as they battle desperately here against the Hordes of Hell. Squig Herds and Rusty Errors are kept going by the Immune Psychology given by the Wah. And Regrowth does go down on the Mutalith Beast while the Angry Pigs continue to hunt. So the Orc War Boys do get the Azag's Art Armor, putting them up to 115 armor. Pulling back, but Azag definitely needs to find a way to kill this. Oh my god, he got the Mutalith Beast! He broke it! Even though it was pretty healthy, he broke its leadership with a full surround. Now this is where Goji can take over the game. If Gojira can kill this Mutalith Beast with the overextension... Yeah, that's the thing. The Muty Beast needed to stay here. It needed to stay on top of the Halberds and the Chaos Warriors and Aeacold, but he made a bit of a mistake moving forward into the backfield where he gets completely surrounded and punished here. So that is going to be the Mutalith Beast getting karate chopped. And um, if Goji kills this, he can easily win this game. Um, for sure. I mean, not easily, but still we'll, we'll have a very good chance because he's got a good infantry core. And the Crimson Killers are doing good work grinding through a lot of these troopers. There's plenty of squigs. A lot of armor-piercing cavalry, and uh, overall, we're going to see how this all unfolds. So the, the dual fates continues. People with Vortex Beast, Chase to the Shadow Realm, Azag the Slaughter, buffing all, all nearby units. Probably does he have the... Uh, I know he's got the Ard Armor, but he doesn't have the Slashes, so he's not buffing the melee attack of nearby units. But overall, the Mutalith Beast does fall. Wow, that's really good. So what needs to happen now for Outer Region? He needs to cheese Azag somehow. If he can cheese Azag, he might be able to win with the Death Star of terror with his big chicken but overall i think that the greenskins probably got this game in the bag now um the fact that they killed that huge centerpiece like without much resistance is pretty huge the wah is certainly not taking any prisoners and goji of course is a greenskin specialist he's very very good at them so clearly uh clearly the man means business so the wah keeps going once again it rains here in the valley Orc War Boys up to 47 melee attack and good combat stats. Outer Region does have his big chicken up in the sky, and it looks like Azag is going to be hunting the chicken now. Crimson Killers are still uh, steady despite the circumstances. A little bit dodgy here from Goji, though. Moving into the Severed Claw with Azag is very dangerous. I think it might be a little bit stronger just to work on the peripheries, work on the flanks, and tear out these positions with Azag before moving in here, because Azag can now be killed by the Halberds as well as Kairos. But there's going to be a big rear charge coming in. The boss is not going to stand alone, so here comes the pigs! squealing all the way in getting a nice engagement and azag is going to be pulling back right now dropping another spirit leech on kairos yes yeah, spirit leech going down and i think kairos was also regrowthing himself so that'll pretty much counter that but goji does have good missile fire here too he's got both of these error boys the rusty errors as well as the regular error boys so they need to uh shoot into kairos if they can try and wear that bad boy down and yeah greenskins have the capabilities of getting surrounds as well which would break these ancient formations pretty damn hard as far as the pit fight goes the Crimson Killers are still going pretty strong. Probably at about seven or 800 value. Yeah, they got about 800 value. Still got it, baby. Um, Aeacold's going to be a little bit hard to drag down. And uh, yeah, there could be some witchcraft from Zinch. You never know. Zinch is really, really strong in land battle. I mean, they're good in domination, but in land battle, they're regenerating shields, provide them a shit ton of healing. And obviously, Greenskin leadership could become a big variable. So Azag does use his art armor. 
Give him a little bit of uh, resistance against that blue fire and uh, Foe Seeker as well. And it's going to be getting back up in the sky and going for a duel. He's actually going to be hunting down Azag, or excuse me, Kairos, which I guess at this point, you're just going to die from blue fires anyways. So might as well die going down, you know, fighting your opponent's uh, key centerpiece. So Goji does break a lot of the formation here. We see the entire Zinch pocket getting collapsed. And even though Aeacold is really strong, I don't think he could solo all of this. Um, you know, there's Stone Trolls here, which are very healthy. There's plenty of Squigs. Crimson Killers are still, you know, fairly numerous. But that Chicken, that Chicken is always a problem. It's always him. He's wavering. Aspects of the Dread Knight being used, giving it magic damage and leadership. The MLG plays here from Goji. But Cairo's probably going to be able to finish him off still, sitting at 5,000 HP. Um, currently 5,000 uh, on the flat, give or take. And now... He is going to be running. So Greenskin leadership is going to become a problem here, and we are going to be seeing Degenerate Zinch. So Zinch might still be able to win this, guys. No, the balance power is not tripping, because you have to remember we have Aeacold and we have Severed Claw, which is going to be almost full health right now after this regrowth. Not full health, but like 60-70%. And they have Shield Regeneration. Kairos is going to be able to Cycle Charge and Chain Route Greenskin units off. This battle could be lost by the Greenskins. It could be. That's that's how powerful Zinch is in land battles. Yeah, it's, it's pretty nuts. So Aeacold is also still perfectly healthy. If, if Man, this has got to feel really bad for Goji. Like, his army wasn't necessarily perfect against his Siege army, but he played very, very well and was able to get ideal engagements. Um, but I, I still think he could he can lose it. I think he's going to lose it, as a matter of fact. Like, the terror routes are just going to be brutal. Crimson Killers are pretty much dead and gone. We got a couple goblins in here, but Aeacold heals in combat, Severed Claws, a raid boss. And Goji mainly has things that are not good against his army anymore. Um, broken or The Orc War Boys are going to suck against Severed Claw, and same will the... Uh, same for the Stone Trolls. They're all going to pay the price. And yeah, Zeech wins this. This is over, man. GG. Wow. That's um, that's brutal. <clears throat> but that's Zeech for you, you know? I think a couple more missile pieces could have been pretty big um, earlier on. But I mean, it went so well for Goji. He played very well. Maybe Grimgore would be better? Because, like, Grimgore would probably still be alive right now. And the thing about Grimgore is he could come in and kill both these, help kill both these units. Whereas the rest of the Greenskin army is going to be a little bit haggard. Um, he's trying to get the rest of the errors in position to shoot at the Severed Claw. Severed Claw currently approaching its healing cap. Aeacold probably still has a distance before his healing cap. It looks like there's going to be another regrowth going down from Kairos. So Kairos is sitting in the back, getting some big shots and uh, causing some serious havoc. Stone Trolls are on their way in, but yeah, they're not going to have a great time. They do drop some big clubs down on these, uh, these aspiring champs. A little bit of Daka coming in. So it looks like the Greenskins did manage to rally some shooting, which is quite big. But Outer Region is not only a really good player, but also is playing probably one of the strongest land battle. I think I would imagine that Cathay and Zincher on their play styles have got to be the strongest land battle factions, right? Like, Human Boy, you would have to let me know. You've been covering land battle more than I have. Um, but from, to me, yeah, that would be my guess if I just had to speculate. Like, Cathay with their box and their, uh, not box, but just tight formations and Harmony being very effective in tandem with, um, you know, some of the healing and different SEs they have feels really, really good. Yeah, I like this idea from Goji. A little bit of kiting. You know, let the trolls regenerate. Shoot some of these bad boys in the back. Um, more Zinchian units are returning here. Aeacold, though, is going to be able to, you know, super saiyan all these. I would imagine Aeacold will just crush these goblins. And here comes the Daka from the Rusty Errors. And it's doing a little bit of work. Has mitigated the armor down to 90 for these uh, aspiring champions. But that's still pretty good. We do see Squigs coming around the back. And the old goblin's going to be moving up to do battle with the Severed Claw. With their Sundered Armor, they'll do a little bit more damage, but 90 armor is still a very considerable amount. Goji needs to definitely abuse the fact that he can heal these trolls and let them just run back and regenerate as much HP as po as much as he possibly can. It's a big green skin Alpha Strike, but yeah, there's probably going to be a Kairos Alpha Strike here too, which will um, mass terror out everything. Severed Claw hanging in there, but he had so much Winds of Magic left. Jeez, another regrowth going down. That's going to be army losses, and GG, well played. Man, brutal, brutal. I can't believe Zinch won that. Such a huge blunder. Um, pretty much outplayed in most ways, but still was able to get there based on its army composition. So that is nuts. That is absolutely nuts. All right, guys. GG, well played. That is going to be a victory for Zinch. Kairos, Mutalith Beast still got 1,400 value despite dying pretty quickly. Severed Claw, no surprises. Goji's army had a lot of, you know, big mass. So had a lot of pigs and you know, squigs and different things that the Severed Claw was going to be good against. And Aeacold, of course, is a raid boss as well. All right. So let's take a look here. Yeah, Kairos does have the death passive. That's true. That is true. So let's look here, see how we're looking in the round. I would imagine we're probably almost done. That was pretty good timing there. Yes, good, good. Um, a handful of games still going, so let's queue up for an old land battle here. 
And uh, should be ready by the time we're done. Nope, oh, multiplayer battles. Uh, ranked matchmaking, LOL ranked. Yeah, what a joke. Remove Severed Claw. <laughs> well, they can be defeated. It's just, uh... yeah. Oh, we're facing Galroch, the mighty Chaos Dragon, huh? All right, who do we feel like playing here? Um, we could do a little bit of a Kislev game. Although, you know what? Let's go back to my Sons of Sigmar. We have to we have to blast this Ravage body. All right. I swear if it's dwarves again. It's probably going to be dwarves. Just watch. The dreaded Dowie. Come for me, dude. I think I think Aeacold's pretty good. Yeah, he's hard to kill, though. <laughs> Aeacold, it's, it's, there's a really haggard thing. You, you could do Aeacold plus the Changeling and turn the Changeling into Aeacold and get two of him and basically have like a, like a double Sigvald build, which is very fun. All right. Um, so where's that? Looking good. So let's get the army all built out here. Two, three... <clears throat> I'm loving it. All right. So that looks fine. Let's do this. Let's do that. I don't remember what my build is in this matchup, but it shouldn't be too hard. Overall, we should be A-OK. -okay. So now for the front line, we're going to want some of you guys. Yes. Let's get a couple of these because they're just super freaking cool. Get some of that. And um, all right. I'm liking the way this build's looking so far. I think it's got some good tools. I probably need to bring a Lord. That would be a good idea to bring an old dreaded Lord. I think I've only seen the Severclaw not at least break. Yeah, no, Severclaw is pretty, pretty strong unit. Pretty damn strong unit. They are no joke. All right, you know what? I know he's not the most ideal choice, but we're going to bring my favorite, my favorite character in Warhammer Fantasy, so... Here he comes. Um, so yeah, we'll bring those and those. We can get this. Uh, as far as that goes, we got the goodies. All right. And um, we probably need, huh. Let's throw you guys in there. I love it. And um, is there any way we can save a little bit of dough? Yeah, we can cut that. A couple of you guys in the back. Hmm. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good to me. Sigmar Sons are always pretty cool. You can you can definitely bring those guys and have a good time. All right. Yeah, I don't know how this is going to go, but let's fire it off and see. Good luck, have fun to my opponent. He's playing the Dreaded Vampire Counts. Volkmar the Grim? No, no, it's not Volkmar. He's, he's okay here. He ain't bad. Can anyone suggest an easy-to-learn first army in PvP multiplayer? I mean, Norska is pretty damn easy. You know, Norska is, I think, very Ungabunga. I don't know how they are in land battle. It depends on the format. If you if if you if you want land battle and Dom, they're pretty different beasts. I mean, there's some overlap for sure, but yeah, it's a, it's it's a different it's a different a different beast. Purify with fire. At least four grenade launchers. Grenade launchers are pretty good in this matchup. They definitely are. Um, they ain't bad, but man, that character is so expensive. Like, the character is definitely heavy, heavily limiting what I can do with this army. Yeah, they're, they're heavily limiting me here. Come on. Um, okay, so what else do we want to bring? Ah, oh, can I save a little bit of dough? Come on. So why are you all so expensive? All right. My opponent's taking his time. Hopefully he'll be ready here in a second. Carl versus Carl Franz is my favorite character. Yeah, he is. He needs some buffs though. He needs some milk. The fact that he's like got only five thousand, like you know, he's so squishy compared to other monstrous lords. Uh, who is currently the most competitive vampire lord? Boris probably. Yeah, Boris in general is very good. Um, against vampire counts though, there is an argument to be made for Franz. The magic damage is relevant. Um, but yeah, like Franz is only good if you're bringing like Lore of, like Lore of Fire and Boris would be ideal here. But I wanted to do something different, so I brought some cool units. It's it's got some Mimi elements to it, but in general, I think the build's got some teeth. <clears throat> Last match is finishing now. Cool. I do have a great sword. It's not mass great swords, but I do have a great sword. All right. So let me know when the match finish. I can minimize during the game and advance the round, and then I'll just jump in and cast one. Um, last game is finishing. Okay, perfect. Yeah, and then I will. Um, I will. 
Hopefully this will be quick. Land battle games are very fast, so I think we're I think we're okay. And uh, do we have anyone else here who has uh, tournament hosting access on Total Tavern? Only two games unfinished. Okay. Well, we'll try and make this one quick then. I don't know how how easy that's going to be, but um, yeah, we'll, we'll get to the bottom of it. Okay, let's do this, this, and this. The dreaded vampire counts are here. We got one great sword. Uh, I like to have like a great sword in this matchup. If you bring too many, you can get kind of countered by the cryptors, but in general, they can do well. All right, so we'll get the wagons of doom, and my favorite wagon, the black lions. Do this and this. All right, good luck, have fun to my opponent. We oh, dude, am I am I I'm gonna be starting an entire YouTube channel to cover the old world? Yes. All right. So yeah, the black lions are pretty good in this matchup. As a matter of fact, like I should be deploying further back and just using my skirmish and you know other tools like that to uh, to party. All right, so he's got a pretty big army. No worries, no worries. Sounds good. All the OGs in chat, I know. It's fun, man. I, I actually, I, I really love land battle when there's not, no drama. Like, if there's no rule breaks and people are playing cool and stuff, you know, I, I really enjoy land battle a lot. It's very fun. Um, it's very fun. All right, so where are we at? Currently, we got... 846 units. He's what is, is he? He must be doing some crazy formation or something. The way he's he's deploying here. All right, let's get you guys moving up. Wagons, friends, and uh, you guys and you guys. So let's get the grenades coming down the middle. Knights of the Blazing Sun to protect. And the black lines. What do we want to shoot? Does he have any grave guard, conic sign, soccer's, more descension? All right, we'll just start working on the uh, the big boys here, and we'll take you guys off fire at will so they don't waste any ammo into uh, crappy targets. Keep you guys like so. Get the grenade launchers heading this way. And we got some fell bats coming around the backside. Okay. That ain't bad. But yeah, so far we're getting good damage in. Franz is going to be chilling out in the neighborhood. And um, we have a bit of an air force. Okay, so there's a little bit of air force action. My opponent retreating, which is great. So let's go ahead and shoot at these bar guys here. And pull these wagons in. And uh, just keep putting the jacket down. Chase these guys around. And uh, the doggos are coming into fight. So we'll just steamroll them real quick. Grenade launchers can come up this way. Although we should probably just pull the grenades back here. They're a little bit vulnerable right now, and we do get a good engagement there as the wagons can start shooting here. Let's retreat you guys this way. And uh, yeah, we got some nastiness. We got some nastiness for sure. So getting a little bit of hurt on these. And how are the black lines doing? The black lines need to continue shooting at these uh, cryptors if they can. And we've almost got those doggos down, but now we need to do this. Let's get Knights of the Blazing Sun coming here. And uh, Franz can go ahead and engage there, pull you guys back and back. And the grenade launchers can now move out. Although he's got a lot of our guys. He's got a whole lot of those bad boys. That is for sure. So let's put fire at will on. France can use the Reichland Rune Fang to buff all those guys up. And uh, we just need to make sure the black lines don't die. If they live, we're okay. So we've already crumbled a couple units. We're getting some good kiting here. And the black lines are beat up. France and company melting these um, skirmish units. And the grenade launchers are still very much alive. Let's pull you back. Okay. So back you go. Back you go. France and company have done great work. So let's bring them over here. And uh, just try and now stabilize this part of the battlefield. Okay, so coming here. And those guys are shooting. We should be able to outmaneuver them. And I believe all of his tools... Oh, Storm of the Night. That's a nice... That's a, a really, really good choice. I like that a lot. All right, so Franz is going to maybe need some regrowth here. We'll have to see. So let's start moving you up and cast regrowth on Franz. Obviously, if I lose Franz, I'm in pretty bad shape. The Knights of the Blazing Sun have made it in. And come on, Franz. You can do it. You can do it, buddy. That Jade Wizard's on his way, so let's just start grenade launching those if we can. Come on, friends. You could do it. All right, grenades getting in there, but we need to run now. Outstanding. And uh, we've gotten some good Daka here. Let's shoot up into the sky. And Franz can fight. Do we get a regrowth on him? We do. Outstanding. So retreat back this way. And now let's go ahead and square our army up over here, like closer to where our wagons are fighting. And the Black Lions are now back online, which is huge. All right, so we can pull the Black Lions back here. Franz is going to keep chasing here. Okay, wagons, you keep blasting. Knights of the Blazing Sun just keep being Giga Chads. And um, we need to go ahead and take fire off Will here and make sure we're shooting some appropriate targets. Grenade launchers, you do your thing. Franz, you know, I'd say the fight has gone very well. We've crushed a lot of the Vampiric Army. We could ch charge those Conduct Sign Soccers for now. And Great Swords can move in. Where does our boy Franz want to go is the question, though. Hmm. Okay, so the Black Lions, let's get them shooting into the Mortis Engine. And uh, hopefully we wear that bad boy down. Pull you guys back and get these spear units to engage against those cryptors. We gotta find a good spot for our boy Franz to fight. A little bit of flanking around the back, but let's go ahead and shoot these uh, Vargas here. Put Fire at Will back on while we kite and whatnot. 
And now the Mortis engine is getting popped in the face pretty hard. Yeah. Uh, could one of, uh, let's see. So out of region, if you still have tournament access, could you uh, advance the round? That would be greatly appreciated. Um, don't, just, just you out of region. Just, I, if multiple people try and do it at the same time, it's going to cause problems. So hopefully that won't be an issue. All right, so let's have our boy Franz move in here. Pull the grenade launchers back that way. Mortis engine is uh, definitely very, very beat up here. But the great swords are still in reserve. Let's pull the black lines here and get the Knights of the Blazing Chads to go in here and Franz to go in here as well. Galmaraz the Warhammer! All right, Franz is landing on the ground. Good. Uh, now we can get a heal here. Heal up a bunch of units. Outstanding. We got some spears moving in to help. And the Mortis engine uh, should be on its way, but I feel we're in a pretty commanding position. I feel we're in a good position. All right. Thank you, Outer. Greatly appreciate it. And uh, yeah, I'll jump in and cast the game because by the time I'm done with this, there's still going to be lobbies getting set up and everything. But yeah, this guy's a good player. It's, it's a good proper scrap. All right. So zombie summon to the backfield. Grenade launchers on the skeleton warriors. Knights of the Blazing Sun are just like straight up the coolest unit. They're so cool. All right. Fran's going to go after the Mortis Ascension. See if he can finish that thing off. Um, we got a couple skeleton warriors over here. Let's get the black lions away. Although we're going to need you guys back here too. So maybe they can come in and clear this out. Let's get you back. And do we have a regrowth or anything? We can use it on the Black Lions to keep them uh, functional. And you guys just keep kiting back this way. Franz is going to take down the Mortis Engine. We're going to keep the Great Swords in reserve to wait for the Mortis Engine to die. And then they'll be able to clean up a whole bunch of these units. So should be fine. Grenade Launchers looking good. Knights of the Blazing Chad still doing it. Franz almost has gotten that down. Let's pop Reichland Runefang to keep the boys fighting a little bit longer. And um, do we have the Black Lions back online now? We do. Great. So that should be able to polish off this Mortis engine. And the Von Karstein Lord has popped all of his items. All right. Looking good. Uh, great Swords can move in and fight now. And how are the grenades doing? They're doing very good. All right. So, Franz, how you looking? Knights of the Blazing Sun have cleared that out. Uh, it looks like there's still a zombie summon there causing a little bit of havoc. But Franz should be able to escape. All right. So clear these guys out. Spearmen, uh, go engage here. Great swords move into that fight, and uh, Knights of the Blazing Sun, we want to pull you back. And I'm pretty sure we got this game in the bag. This is looking pretty good for us. <clears throat> Let's take these Cryptors down. All right, good, good. Wagons can move this way, and um, let's go ahead and do an Earth Blood. Uh, we'll save it. We, we don't really know what we want to heal yet. I don't see too many avenues for my opponent to come back. I still have pretty good ammo, and the Black Lions have been able to survive all of his um, brass attempts and his diving and whatnot. I like the Von Karstein Lord, though. I think that's a really cool tech against my um, Air Force. But Franz is just too too cool for that to work. You know, he's got, he's got the plays. All right, let's do an Earth Blood there. Heal those bad boys up. And uh, we can shoot the Von Karstein Lord a little bit. Yeah, put some hurt into that man. Uh, grenades, still doing well. Let's pull these Knights of the Blazing Sun. Because he's going to dive me with those Vargas right now. So we need to just shut those things down if possible. Uh, grenades, yep. Still just teeing off. What do we got here? These are Conic Sign Stalkers. Okay, we can actually go after them. Knights of the Blazing Sun, gonna wreck these Vargas here, and Franz is gonna show this pitiful vampire lord who's boss. Who the true son of Sigmar is. Alright, there he goes. So, great swords, grinding. Uh, that's gonna be army losses soon. And, um, wagons are, they're good. They've been nerfed a lot. They're very good. I mean, against vampire counts, they're exceptionally good. And some matchups are easy to counter. It just depends. That's how Warhammer is in general. Alright, GG. Strong opponent. He was good. It was a good storm of the knights. Sigmar, bless this ravaged body. Franz was a beast, though. He, he did a lot. I mean, not a lot. He, he seemed to do a lot of damage, even though his value is only 1,100. Black Lions are great. Wagons are great. Knights of the Blazing Sun were MVPs. The fact that they cleared off so much of the undead was huge. Um, so, yeah. GG. Well played. Well played. Okay. So, let's go here. Find a match to um, cast now. Chosen one. Let's do a chosen one game. I haven't casted a chosen one game in years. Empire is balanced. Yeah, Empire is a pretty balanced faction compared to a lot of other ones. That's why I like them. You never feel bad about playing Empire. Ooh, we got Stingers versus Chosen One. Yeah, this is gonna be fun. Kislev versus Skaven. All right. I played that matchup so many times. I played that matchup so many times. It's true. <clears throat> uh, Slade, yeah, for some reason it gave Slade the buy twice. I don't know why I did that. It's probably because of the way his score worked out. So, um, yeah, well, we'll, we'll we're going to have to move from here. But worst case, I can, I can play Slade in between games so he can get a rep in there. 
Oh God, you, I, you just know anything with CA is going to be haggard and introduce some like new broken ass unit, right? Like there's always going to be something like that, always. Yeah. <clears throat> Here we go, man. Slade is too strong, it is. He is too strong, he's too powerful to be left alive. Slayer of the Foul all day, all day. Although I do play Warriors of Chaos, so that they're a little bit foul. All right, so we're loading in Kislev versus Skaven here. Uh, Kislev was very powerful in land battle when they first came out. I would imagine they still are because of, you know, some of the new nasty shit they've gotten. Things in the woods, Mother Stank, a lot of scariness. But Chosen One is a OG Skaven player. He's represented Skaven in our old school faction wars and has obviously been playing for a long time. So we'll see what they can do. Which units uh, do you predict for Nurgle and Thrones of Decay? Yeah, the centerpiece will probably be a Toad Dragon. Um, toad Dragon, Pestigors, um, some sort of a legendary lord, maybe Tamarcon. Tamarcon, Toad Dragon, uh, Pestigors, uh, a couple ROR's, and um, and maybe Plague Ogres. Like Plague Ogres would be pretty rad because I'm pretty sure in Warhammer Fantasy, the Warriors of Chaos could bring Chaos Ogres. I don't know. I think they could. So I, I could see that being a unit they would bring, which would be badass. Like. Uh, like an ogre with poison, it's a little bit slower. Yeah, it'd be fun. Multiple painful empire campaigns have led me to always enjoy. Yeah, <laughs> vampires getting stomped. Oh yeah, same dude. Same. <clears throat> All right, so taking a look here at the forces of Kislev. Front battle line of armored Kossars. They don't really have too many choices. Armored Kossars are great. Uh, super good combat stats, good hybrid shooting. What's not to love? Things of the Woods, anti-infantry, good mass, very disruptive against Skaven. But Skaven do have some tools against them. Clan Rat Spears, Eshen Triads, they can all trade pretty well into those. And uh, in the backfield, we got the Winged Lancers, the mighty Polish cavalry, have arrived. And up in the hills, it is going to be the Big Stank. And she's just going to be Flock of Doom and Bear Launcher. Bear Launcher has infinite charges, so it's pretty damn strong. Uh, I would imagine in a land battle format, and Flock of Doom is always good against rats. Cost by Dervishes in the tree line. Now... Look in here, we do have the old rats. Oh yeah, baby, it could claw on the Doom Wheel, which is not bad. I find that Storm Demon is often bugged. It doesn't shoot, but we'll see if he can make it work. Uh, Warp Lightning as well as Funzing Rune, good staples. Warp Lightning is excellent at just dropping on a blob of like Kossars. Has 100% AP value and does considerable damage. And Kislev has a pretty big hard on for blobbing as well. So having the Flensing Rune against that is gonna be very strong. It could Zap Zap Cannon, Rat Ogres in the backfield, and that's gonna be it. So it's gonna be a defensive play from the Skaven. Obviously, Skaven are typically a very defensive faction. They like to sit and just kind of chill out and let their opponent charge them. But in this case, that's how it's going to be. Yeah, Eric, you're welcome, man. No, I, I'm, I'm having a great time today. It's been really fun diving back into the old land battles. What's, what's, what I like, the one thing that I really like about land battles over Dom is, um, like, domination games tend to be a little bit anticlimactic. I mean, they, you can get those really good ones sometimes, but there's a lot of, like, two or three minutes of one player just, like, trickling shit out after they've lost. People don't necessarily leave when the game's over, um, but land battle is usually a little bit more decisive. So it's aesthetically, I think land battle is nicer to watch, for sure. Um, but you know, they both have their pros and cons. <clears throat> How do I feel about the CA letter? I don't know. Like, I don't really, uh, you know, I'll believe anything they say when I see the actions put, put forward. You know, like a lot of game companies will say they're going to change. I'm going to change. You know, I promise. It's the last time this is going to happen. But you know, you know how that goes. We'll see. We'll see how it actually goes. Yeah, I'm. 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 I'm suspicious. I'm suspicious. All right, guys, the battle is on. Let us see how this goes. The big, wide Kissel of battle lines here for Stingers going to be looking to envelop the rats. Get a nice little surround on those little guys, and we'll see how that works out for them. So, uh, wing glancers all across the horizon, you hanging out with you things in the woods. About me. Oh, I heard, I heard some talking. I was like, is somebody on Discord with me? But it was actually Mother Ostanka giving a speech. I was like, <laughs> what does that sound? So Winged Lancer's getting hit by the Zap Cannon out of the gates. Uh, do they lose any models? Only one model does go down there. Imagine being like some badass like knight, you know, some 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 Hussar, and, and then the battle just ends with a Warp Lightning to your face before you even get to charge, and it's got to be pretty depressing. Uh, things in the woods and Mother Ostankia going to be coming in to cause some havoc. Let's see what Ickit's Zap Zap can do and Ickit himself. 
on his mighty doom wheel. His laser beam does hit pretty hard. Uh, it, it hits harder than regular doom wheels, if I'm not mistaken. So might be able to pick off a couple models here and there. Flanks coming in, cost by dervishes in the trees here for Stinger. So he's got two of them ready to come around the back. And Skaven look pretty well defended though. Like I really like these Skaven battle lines. The fact that they have the Eshin triads in the secondary to deal with like penetrating cavalry units and things in the woods. I think that's going to be very fun. So Mother Astankia getting zap zapped. Got to be careful. She's a big chariot character. So she can definitely die pretty quickly to uh, cannon type units and warp lightning. So she's going to be lurking on the outside. But you can see the power of the Stank. She has already killed one clan rat spear and is already, you know, softening up another one. She's an extremely powerful character. Mother Ostankia, very, very oppressive at times. <clears throat> so the Winged Lancer is going to be moving in and uh, are going to be running into spears a little bit. So Chosen One looks like he's going to be able to fend those off. We do see Ikit Claw and his Rat Ogres able to get a good engagement. And many of these Winged Hussars, they're not going to be arriving today. The Sabaton music is not going to be playing right now. They will maybe play it later, but at this point, they are going to be chilling out. So Kislev has got a full surround here. We see the dervishes in the backfield, and the Skaven army is getting hit on a couple fronts, but overall, good stanky engagements on the side. Uh, a clan rat unit is down already, clan rat spears, and the Globideers are already dead. And what Stingers is going to do is he's going to be like a vulture. Anything that walks away from the pack, well, that's not really a vulture. That's more like a like a you know a hunting animal, right? Like it, when the weak and the slow run away from the pack, the herd, he's going to find them and chase them off to make sure they don't come back, which is a really really good play. I love that. I love that usage of the light cavalry. I think that's great. Meanwhile, in front, we do have Ikit Claw getting into combat with the Armored Cossars, doing a little bit of damage. Also, some Clan Rat Spears have engaged against the things in the woods, taking a little bit of shooting as well. But here comes Eshin Triads, and Eshin Triads will trade super well here. Um, their anti-large attacks will be able to drag down not only the cavalry, but also the things in the woods. But a nice counter charge from the Winged Lancers and a full surround might be enough to actually take down the Eshin Triads. We'll have to see. They do have Ogre support. So I'm thinking this fight still might go pretty well for the Skaven, but we'll keep tabs on it. Now, the backfield, more flank overloads coming in. Looks like Poison Wing Globes able to get some slight volley fire. And Mother Ostankia getting her butt kicked. Oh my god, the Warp Lightning Cannon at point blank range is doing brutal damage. I and mean, Mother Ostankia needs to go, you know, have some goulash. She needs to go drink some borscht and eat some pierogi and, uh, yeah, get out of here. Maybe some compot would help. Yeah, not looking great. Ostankia, the Stank needs to flee the scene. I mean, that's just going to be game over if Stank dies. So Flensing Rune going down as well. Chosen One is going to be going for the kill. Mother Ostankia is fleeing the scene. Weeping Blades and Zap Zap is here. She's got 1500 HP, 1400 HP. Another Warp Lightning Cannon coming down. Unbreakable because of the Kistle of Passive. But that is a huge, huge play from Chosen One because a lot of the battle was looking pretty rough here. But the fact that Stingers did uh, blunder the Lord potentially could be enough to end the game. So Mother Ostankia, and down she goes, the Hag. Taken back to the uh, north by her spirit creature. She's going to be fine. Don't worry about it, guys. Look at that. She's going back to chill out and, uh, you know, hang out in the woods. But for the rest of the fighting, Kislev is now leaderless. And the Skaven, though, looking very beat up on many fronts. Their triads and their rat ogre combinations appear to be doing very well. Um, Warp Lightning Cannon, despite all this, is still online. Even with heavy, heavy cavalry charges going after it, the uh, Warp Lightning Cannon has already done its job. 1,400 value on this. A little bit of hybrid shooting coming out from Kislev. But, I mean, Ikit Claw might be able to just carry this game. Uh, if he has enough support, he's going to be able to probably deal with most of the Kossars. Granted, there still are a lot of things in the woods and a lot of pressuring pieces, which could be very, very nasty. Hmm. So you can see Kislev obviously trading a little bit better in terms of army trades. The leadership snipe is really good and is basically the only thing that is going to be keeping um, the Skaven in this game. It's like, you know, the Warp Lightning cast going down there. It does tickle the pickle of the things in the woods. Warp Lightning Cannon is offline. Balance of Power is pretty even at this point. You can see it's right in the middle. Kislev still has a ton of units, and Kislev is a faction that has very good base leadership, so they're not going to suffer too bad when their lord dies. It's not like when the Skaven lord dies or like a Greenskin lord dies. That's really bad, but Kislev, their, their troopers are stalwart, and they're going to be able to hold in there despite their lord dying here. So nice hybrid shooting, and uh, yeah, those Kossars pushing up, routing back. A lot of the Skaven, Skaven looking like they have nothing. Like, all I'm seeing from the Skaven is the lord. Um, we see Ikit. We see a couple of triads back here, but the Winged Lancers are plentiful. I guess the Skaven have a pocket of strength right here, some Globideers and some Rout Ogres. Uh, it's going to be a close, close fight. I mean, uh, I think if Ikit Claw can bait a huge fight, like if he can get like, you know, a huge amount of Kislev surrounding him, Kislevites, he's going to be able to maybe punish them with the Flensing Rune. We'll have to see. In the back, Chosen One, he moves in and gets an okay surround on the Dervishes. Going to be able to finish them off, which is quite good. Ikit Claw now fighting in the tree line, but he's taking a bit of damage. Um, Warp Lightning will be very good here. If you could drop a Warp Lightning on that blob, that'd be sweet. But yeah, he needs a little bit of support. Things in the woods have some good armor piercing, so they're going to be able to wear through the 110 armor of Ikit Claw with some efficiency. 
Uh, the Cossars and range shooting is moving up. A lot of, uh, uh, relatively short on ammo. Yeah, nice war planning there. Looks like it did kind of tickle those units as they do try and retreat. Obviously, terror routes aren't going to be a variable here. That's one reason why Kislev is so strong as well. Basically, the entire faction is immune to terror, so they're very, very tough. Skaven might be able to find a way to get this. Who knows? In the back, we do see the Kislevites using their big hammer, using their mobile formation to take out isolated Skaven units. And these route ogres will fight well. Globadier is also ripping a couple shots here in the fourth quarter. Able to get some damage over time into these guys who will be running them down in just a second. And now, ladies and gentlemen, you can cue the Sabaton music. Here they come. All right, so when the Winged Hussars arrive, Lance is couched for Ursin. They get in there, punting a lot of those rats into the Shadow Realm. Should be able to hunt them down, no problem. But the Triads and other units are on their way in. Triads will melt down the Winged Lancers pretty efficiently. But man, oh man, it's going to be tough to deal with this, this core of units. Like, this blob of Kislevites is tough. That's going to be a hundred Kossars. They didn't lose. How do they, how do they lose nothing? They haven't taken a single HP damage this battle. And we have 95 Kossars here as well. And we have another brick of 92 Kossars and 75 Kossars here. I think this Skaven lose this for sure. Uh, I don't see any way that old chosen one is going to be able to get it done with um, just Ikiklaw. I mean, even though he's good against a lot of these units, there's still plenty of mass to bully the Doom Wheel. We have like the things in the woods and uh, yeah, it looks like the winged Kossars have arrived for sure. Vienna has been saved, and uh, that is going to be the end of the Rat People. Ikiklaw, though, he did very well. It just seemed like so many of the engagements went well for Kislev outside of the Leadership Snipe. The Leadership Snipe was like the one thing that was super powerful. Um, Warplighting Cannon, not a bad cast. It does some okay damage. They've been pretty good this game. Eshin Triad's going to be run down by the Kislevites, so here they go. Big charge right there. As you see, those rats punted into the Shadow Realm, so there they go. Sent to another uh, dimension, and uh, yeah, it's only a matter... Of time until old chosen one pays the troll toll and yeah, he's gonna pay it he is gonna pay it for sure no fight my rats they're trying the rat people are trying to fight they need a little bit more warp stone they didn't have enough is that gonna be a funzing rune right there no that's storm demon classic storm demon i feel like that item's bugged and it just doesn't work i don't know maybe maybe sometimes it works maybe it does all right guys icky claw gonna be duking it out with the things in the woods we see a couple wing lancers moving in uh, should be able to clean him up. Yep, Skaven have nothing left. And, uh, he's gonna get Brass Orb. Is that a Brass Orb right there? Yeah, nice Brass Orb. I mean, do you guys believe in miracles? Do you think the dreaded Skaven are gonna be able to pull this out? I sure, I sure as hell don't. Um, pretty damn close to army losses, too. Yeah, if these triads get chased down, a couple more units. If Ikiklaw takes, like, another 15-20% damage, that's gonna be the end of him. So, I believe this is the fourth and final round of the tournament. We're gonna be advancing to the top four after this. So let's take a look here. All right. Perfect. Sounds good. Check in there. And we saw the old, uh, I, you know, I thought there was a glimmer of hope when the rats ch cheesed the Mother of Stankia, but um, it wasn't enough. The rest of the army just traded too inefficiently. But Mother, Mother, the Mother Snipe on Mother Sank was really good. That was really, really good. GG well played, man. They both played a great game. Fun times indeed. Fun times indeed. All right, so let's take a look here. Skaven might not get any more DLC. So Human Boy, here's my prediction. I think Skaven are gonna get an FLC. I don't think Skaven are gonna get any more DLC, but Skaven are gonna get an FLC, which is gonna add Thankful. It's gonna add Storm Fiends, and it might actually add um, Vermin Lords. I think that could happen. I think it could definitely happen. So we'll see. So let's refresh this, see how we're looking here. And we're working our way to the top four. We're very close to it. Um, yeah, there's still a lot of games to be played, so I can go ahead and do a land battle in the meantime. All right, so let's do, do this. And um, yep. The Thankful is coming for sure. He's like one of the most iconic characters in Warhammer Fantasy. If they didn't add Thankful, it would just be silly. And that's easy. Like, it probably wouldn't take CA more than a couple, like a week to create Thankful, right? <clears throat> they already have, like, most of the Skaven models and pretty easy. Vermin Lords will probably get added, yeah. I don't think Skaven will get a full DLC, I agree with that. But, you know, could be wrong. All right, so we're on the, the Bone Zone, my favorite map. Oh, yeah, dude, give it to me, Precious. Um, who do we want to play here? Um... Been playing a lot of Chawi. Bretonia is always fun. Dwarves, dwarves. If we want to make our opponent suffer, even if they win, it's pure suffering. Uh, let's go Nurgle. 
Do we want to go Nurgle? Nurgle could be fun. Yes, good. Good, Anakin. Good. We need a flying rat. Flying rat. A flying rat of some sort would be really fun. Okay, the, the Dowie Zar. Okay. So Dowie Zar can be kind of scary here. I actually don't know what the meta is in land battle. And Dom, I know how to play this, but um, here I'm not 100% sure. All right. So let's get you guys going to party. Um, probably need you two. All right. Let's do that. Um, cool. And cool. Looking all set here. A little bit dodgy, I suppose. Um, yeah, and then we can also get, do I want to get that? Huh, that could be kind of fun. Let's try that. It's a different play style. And from here, yes, yes. Any excuse to bring Chaos Knights is always just like a pure hard on. Um, I don't know if I'm going to find a way to bring them here, sadly, but the Chaos Knights are really cool. I think thematically one of the coolest units in Warhammer. Yeah, it's a little bit risky, isn't it? Why why are you so expensive here? Okay. Let's do that. Do that. Maybe these two. And then we can mix you in. Yeah, that look, build looks all right. Um, what am I weak against here is the question. Rot flies. I always want to make rot flies work, but I can never find a way to make, make rot flies work. I always am like mega disappointed by them. Like just turbo, turbo disappointed. Um, is it going to be like chaff centric army? Soul grinders are okay, but they're very weak against death Reek rocket launchers. And death Reeks are very, very, very good against Nurgle as is. So maybe that's a tricksy one. Let's try, let's try something different with this. So we're going to try something a little bit funny, um, which could be terrible, but it could also be very efficient. And um, yeah, here we go. Good luck, have fun. By a million hobgoblin archers, it for, it for sure could happen here. It could for sure happen. Beasts of Nurgle, no beasts of Nurgle here. Yeah, they, they would just die to the death streaks and stuff. Okay, so taking a look at the tournament. Um, let's refresh the brackets. Check that out. <clears throat> I love sword and board knights. Yeah. I didn't bring any here though. Like Chowie are pretty good against such things. At least in Dom. Um, but that's my power fantasy. It's just bringing as many Chaos Knights as possible. Yeah, Dwarves and Empire. Did CA ever say when they're gonna do the DLC? I don't know if they there was like a confirmation or anything. All right, so yeah, we got Marauders with great weapons, which, uh, you know, we'll see how they work out. Nurgle champions, in my opinion, are the best unit on the roster. They're very, very good. These these guys are just so Chad, and they're so hard to stop too. All right, so let's get Festus over. Um, how do we want to do Festus over here? Probably is good. We got Plague Toads and Plague Toads. Plague Toads are pretty good against most uh, infantry. Obviously, Spears are okay against them, but yeah, we got a couple of these. I wanted to try a Flying Goon Squad, like something like this. I feel like it's gonna suck, but you know, this is a good time to experiment, right? So let's get you in there. And um, we can do you in here. Let's actually do both hounds here in case he does a vanguard. We're going to be able to pop on him. Yeah. <clears throat> I really don't like this bounce of power, though. Jesus, look at that shit. You guys seeing this bounce of power? What is that? What is that shit, man? Um, so there's a fair amount of Empire units that are missing from the game. Like an Empire Engineer, um, the Grandmasters. Um, we're missing the Grandmasters. We're missing some of the Knightly Order units. Celestial Huracanum is not in the game. Holy shit. Okay. Wow. Okay. So let's attack. Let's attack. Let's get you guys going up here and uh, you guys going up here. Okay. Wow. Holy shit. Okay. So that that escalated quite quickly, but I'm very grateful that I have these units here. All right. I, I, everyone, everyone and their dog vanguards on this map, you know? Everyone and their dog vanguards here. So that was pretty big. We get a good engagement here. Got a couple Marauder Horsemen coming in. Let's just send them in the melee to fight. And um, Festus is going to be uh, moving in to help as well. So let's go on Healing Elixirs. Get you to route them off here. So that's a very, very good fight for us on the side. We're going to form ranks here. And uh, yeah, we, we get some good battle. That's very, very good for us. Basically took no casualties. Uh, we do see some Bull Centaur Renders coming in. We don't really need these guys now. So let's bring them back to the main line. And um, yeah, now we're about to get hit by quite a bit. So our flank over here is very exposed. Let's pull that back and tighten that up a little bit. Um, for the hound units, we can go ahead and chase and um, we can go ahead and chase you. 
And now the horsemen are going to get ready to party. So let's go here and go here, go here. And um, you guys move up through there and you guys move up through here, here and here. All right. So that should be adequately good. Now we can get these guys kind of screening out the bull centaurs. Um, we could just go for an alpha strike on these bull centaur renders. We have enough units here that I don't think they're going to be able to stop us. Uh, I think we'll be okay. We need to pull Festus back there, though. So let's do a uh, Rancid Visitations. It'll kill that unit pretty quickly. So we'll do that. Um, those guys have been chased off. Let's go get those Oglacons boys. Make sure they don't come back here. And now we need to get the Toads pushing through onto the Archers. That needs to happen like stat. So let's get you moving here, you moving here. And you guys hustling up this way. Good, 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 good. And I think the Alpha Strike over here is going pretty well. Yeah, the Aspiring Champs, you guys need to stay and help finish them off. And uh, the backfield's looking a little bit compromised. Let's get on the archers there and there and there and there as well. Good. Snail cavalry. Oh, yes. How did, Man, those guys like almost got terror rotted there. Jeez, that's that's a tough one. All right, so the bull centaurs um, have been dealt with. So let's grab you guys and get your throwing weapons here. Keep moving here. And yeah, I'm pretty sure we've got this one in the bag. We've had too many favorable trades. Um, we just need to find a way to kill those other bull centaurs now. And then I think we're going to be fine. So let's get our throwing weapons up this way. Um, Furies and Flies can fly over here. Um, not before the Furies chase off those Bull Centaurs, though. Oh, they're already shattered. Okay, so we don't need to worry about that. Yep, so just keep forcing your way onto the Archer units. And um, without the Archer units, the Toads are going to be able to kind of concave in and take his army down. And, uh, and yeah, let's get us around here. Do a little bit of a slow. A little slowing action right there is good. Um, maybe pull the Flies in. I like how well they worked against the Bull Centaurs. We need to get Festus back in action if we can. So let's get those wolf riders. Backfield's looking pretty damn haggard for my opponent. Festus is going to be waddling back. Uh, a couple marauders here. Yep, keep chasing. And let's get you guys on the bull centaurs. Throwing weapons. Work them down. Work them down, boys. Let's get it. Stag knights. Stag knights are actually not a bad unit, in my opinion. I don't know about land battle, but in Dom, stag knights are very commonly used. They require a shit ton of micro and a lot of finesse, but if you can pull it off, I find that they can do reasonably well. All right, so that Vanguard fight went very well for us, and, you know, most people like to Vanguard there. So if you can set up an ambush of your own, you can usually do pretty well. Um, all right, so you're moving in. Looking good, looking good. Let's move you guys back up to the front, see if we get some adequate trading here. Maybe you guys out of melee with those damn Hobgoblins. And I think it's only a matter of time before we finish off his army here. And then we can move on to the Grand Finals. Can somebody check the, uh, check the round? See how we're looking? All right, let's keep doing that. Throwing weapons here. Still got it, baby. Still got it. All right, Rancid Visitations. Get it. Chase down all these units. Toads come back in, throwing weapons. And uh, Festus, you go here. Switch to Harbinger Pestilence for a second. Although I should have stayed on the heel. Yeah, it's all good. All right, so the Nurgle Champions uh, need to just bully this guy if they can. Although we're still fighting the damn Bull Centaurs. Jeez. We'll have a Fecundity in a moment. <clears throat> go and go. And um, yeah. Looking good, man. Looking good. GG, well played. I think we got this one. Let's go ahead and drop the slow on this guy so we can't escape. We got the rot flies. And uh, Nurgle bless this ravaged body. All right. I dig it, man. I dig it. It's pretty fun. Is it not worth playing Warriors? Oh, Warriors of Cast are definitely a lot weaker without DLC. Yeah. Definitely a lot weaker. Yeah. Not getting, you know, the Mutalith Beast is pretty, pretty massive and a few other things. All right, guys. <clears throat> Good amount of games left. Let's see. Uh, my opponent has not messaged me back. Who's your opponent, Zark? Because I'll drop them right now and you'll get the free win. So it's too late for them to do that now. Uh, okay, so your opponent hasn't messaged you. Can you message me in Discord and confirm that, Zark? I just want to make sure you're not... Yeah. Hey, Opo, AFK, yeah? All right, I just shot you a message. Sorry about that. You know, sometimes people just disappear when they lose a couple games. I like Stag Knights, though. I don't think they're bad. They're very glass cannon, but they can do well. Very micro-intensive. As long as you have Archeon who comes... Yeah, yeah, it's true. Like, you can be fine with without the DLC with Warriors of Chaos. You're definitely stronger with it, but... Yeah, it's it's something. Jakub, Jankuya Bardzo for the 100 Zlotus. Thank you, man. Sorry I missed your donation. And Chakra, thanks for becoming a channel member. Missed a couple of those. And Hammond as well. Sorry, it was probably during the heat of a game. <clears throat> okay. So, doing a little bit of admin work while we prepare here. Okay, he's dropped. 
And let's do this. I'm refreshing. And soon we'll go to the top four. So we'll take a look at this. I got trebuchets. My halberd box was a fail. Oh, Bretonia got you, huh? They took down the dreaded Zinch. All right, then. Okay. So let's check here. So one, two, right? So that should be one for you. Outstanding. Let's peek over the brackets and see how that all looks. All right, where are we at? There it is, switching over. Yeah, almost there. We have a couple here, um, Patrick versus Rusty. Uh, yeah, a few games, not too many. Yeah, it's gonna be one, two, three, four games left. So we probably don't have time for another land battle in this uh, in this this window here, because soon we'll be moving to top four. Let's see what top four looks like right now. So we have um, this individual who I've, I have no idea who that is. Obviously, I don't know how to read those characters. Um, Stingers, race, and outer region. Outer region, yeah, but there's gonna be a big tiebreaker here. There's a couple people who haven't finished yet that could still change the tiebreakers. So yeah, we have no idea how that's gonna actually unfold. But yeah, the top four is looking almost finalized, almost finalized. Did Zotes ever have tabletop models? Zotes Warhammer model. I know they do in the 40K, right? Zotes exist in 40K as well. Um, did they, do they ever have a fantasy model? <clears throat> Zotes Warhammer fantasy model. Uh, I'm not seeing it. Is that like, that looks like a 40K unit. Oh, they were like in some, like ro the role-playing game maybe? Oh no, here's some. Yeah, okay, here's some old Zotes. Those might be kitbashed, I'm not sure. Hmm. They are very strange units. Aesthetically, I don't like the Zotes very much, but in terms of gameplay, I think they're fine. Pwn, you made it into top four, did you? Oh, all right then. Zotes existed. I, I am back from Kislev, I've returned, yeah, from Poland. A little bit of snow, a little bit of rain there. It was very fun. It was very fun. Came out around the time of Femir in the late 80s. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's old school. Okay, so refreshing. Yeah, yeah, I didn't have the, the screen up. Let's go look at the Troll Trader real quick and see what that looks like. I wonder if they have any old zotes on here. By the way, if you guys, I have no affiliation with this website. They don't pay me. They don't do anything. <laughs> I assure you. But this is where I get most of my Warhammer Penny Team of New Cheers. You can definitely do well on well on here. Um, Zotes. Holy shit. Oh, they actually have an old Zote model on here? Dominator King Zote? What the hell is that thing? A Dominator King Zote. That must be like some old like Beastman Zote or something. So this appears to be an old Zote. Wow, that thing is so haggard. That looks like a Fisher Price toy. <laughs> oh my god. That's old school, man. I would imagine their inventory has been going pretty quickly with, um, with you know, the old world coming out. A lot of people have probably been uh, probably been buying out a lot of the models on here. Yeah, but you can typically get pretty good deals. Depends on where you are. Oh my God, look at the old Franz model. Oh, that's that. This is old Carl Franz from like the nineties. Oh God. Oh God, it's so awful. I love it. Here's Volkmar the Grim. This is old Volkmar too on his war altar. He's literally riding like a child's like scooter. Yeah, I almost want to order this. This is like so classic. It's so iconic, right? Granted, I already have Volkmar the Grim, so that would be a little bit foolish for me to get that, I suppose. Hellblaster volley gun. Um, yeah, a lot of cool stuff. A lot of mages, hand gunners. You can build out a lot of cool. They have a lot of the wizards too, which is neat. Flagellants. I wonder if they have any warrior priests. Warrior priests are a really hard model to find, like really difficult. This banner car carrier as well is really cool. Oh, the classic witch hunter. I love this model. The classic witch hunter is such a good model. I mean, this paint job isn't the best, but he is really cool. He's really cool. Yeah, many prices are insane. Well, these are out of print, but the thing is, it's it, you should wait till old world. Like they're going to be reselling a lot of old models when um, they get around to the empire. Let's see what else they have on the empire. Yeah, demographs for sixty dollars. This is a ripoff. This is a ripoff right here for sure. I mean, you can get probably a box of new demis for like you know what, like way less than that, and that's in pounds too. They have some good deals. Some of them are definitely overpriced. Um, but yeah, it's a nice paint job on this one actually. 
Hey, it looks pretty nice. That's, that's a nice paint job. Warrior Priest of Ulrich. Oh, that guy's sick. Oh, hell yeah. The Pimp Hat. Fisher Price Volkmar. That's a good Warrior Priest model, too. That was a paint job on that. That's actually not a bad paint job, either. It wouldn't be that hard to touch it up. Yeah, Warrior Priest. Dude, he's dual wielding the hammers. That's so badass. I'm sure that wouldn't be, like, a super efficient. Yeah, here's another old school Warrior Priest. Yeah, it's really fun, man. It's really fun. And here's the old, I believe this is like an Ulrich, um, an Ulrich uh, warrior priest. He's got like some huge battle axes and stuff like that. I'm so excited to play Empire again. Like the fact that we can play tabletop fantasy again in like a couple weeks is such an exciting thing. I'm so excited. All right. Um, where were we? Okay. Almost there. Almost there. Get old Grom and Skarsnik. Yeah. Well, you know, GW is going to be selling the minis again soon. Uh, I know. I don't know. I think when the old world, old world launches, it'll be just Bretonia and Tomb Kings, but they're going to be getting around to the other factions too in terms of new uh, mini, old minis being sold again. Yeah, that'll be fun. Do they have 90s Nagash? Says Dov. I think they do. <clears throat> they usually have them on there. They usually do. Okay. How are we looking? Refreshing the old tournament. And did the last round finish? The top four is looking pretty defined. It's looking pretty defined here. And uh no, just one game. Okay. This one, this one's an important game too. It could affect it. So see if there was a giant snail for Britonia. Okay, we can go back and look a little bit more. We have like probably, I don't know, like five minutes until we get to the next round, give or take. So fantasy, uh, Bretonia, like, Bretonia is getting their models re-released. So buying expensive Bretonian miniatures on here definitely wouldn't be worth it. They're getting re-released, so. Um, you wanted me to look at, what did you guys want, want to look at? Hang on a second, let me check here. Uh, you wanted to see if there was the old Nagash model. The 90s Nagash? No, only the new ones. Yeah, I'm not seeing the old Haggard um, Nagash on there. His 90s model was just like the most janky thing I've ever seen. It was so freaking haggard looking. Look at some high elves. High elves have some cool models. Yeah, we're done. The old Treeman models are horrendous. They are horrendous. But there's also a bit of nostalgia that goes with that, you know? I think they're fun, but I understand people don't like them. <clears throat> okay, so how are we looking? Um, looks like everybody is done. Scores have been reported. So for today's top four, we're gonna have this gentleman, Stingers, raced in outer outer region, just barely made it. Um, actually, oh, that's right, because our um, our leaderboard actually it's doing the tiebreakers based on the domination leaderboard, which isn't fair per se. So what we're gonna do is something a little bit different. So we're gonna have outer region play against chosen one in a one v one real quick. So uh, all right, yeah, because it's not fair to use that metric. And then um, he can, then Egos can play the winner of that game. So we're gonna have a couple more matches. Okay, so outer region versus um, chosen one. Go ahead and play for uh, top four spot. Good luck, have fun. Yeah, because currently the tiebreaker takes into account the leaderboard on the website, which only uses domination. Um, so that that definitely isn't fair. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna fix that. We are gonna fix that. All right. And then the other gentleman here, winner of that game, plays if he's still here. Map will be Galvaraz. All right. Cool. So that's gonna be squared away. So we're going to have like a bit of a death match because it wouldn't be fair to advance them based on a domination leaderboard, right? So that's something I have to take into account for Swiss. Yeah, because, oh yeah, that makes tiebreaker a little bit tricky because th there's three people that have strength, uh, strength uh, tiebreaker of 10. All right, one sec guys, just got to message the players real quick. And um, where is this? Okay, edit. And um, whoever that is, Whoever this gentleman is, 
plays. Let me message him. So just coordinating this. And then what I'll do is I'll, um, we'll cast this one. Hey man, you here? So the rest of the top four just hang tight. It's, it's basically a three-way arm wrestling match, yeah. Basically, basically a little duel here. So we're going to go cast that game. All right. And let me find this. Um, outer region versus chosen one. And see if they're going to play. Uh, Stingers is high. So yes, Stingers is high on the domination leaderboard, but he's undefeated. So if you're undefeated, he hasn't lost a single game. Um, you're guaranteed a spot in the top four. So there, there's no issues with the number one and two spots because they're, they're, it, it, the leaderboard wouldn't be a variable with those two because they're the only two undefeated players guaranteeing that they're in the top four. The only issue is with these three players. Um, oh yeah, and then we need to have the winner of this. Yeah, so race is going to be there. Um, so these, these three are guaranteed a spot right now. Outer region is going to play chosen one. And then the winner of that game is going to play this individual here. So you will play winner of outer and, um, you'll play winner of outer region, outer and chosen for top four spot. Stand by. All right, cool. There we are. And we're all set. We are all set, ladies and gentlemen. Lag for the lag gods? Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. That's right, Pwn. You technically didn't lose today. Yeah, it's impressive stuff. So they're going to set the map up here, and um, we should be good. Should be all good. We're set. Just answering some questions. They are doing a playoff. For top four, stand by. Uh, just hang for now. If you have to go, let me know then. Okay, cool. So these players are going to do their um, picks, not picks, but army picks. Oh my god, yeah, look at this. Uh, looking back at the old school stuff here. Pwn is the people's champ, yeah. We got two death matches, although there's a chance one of the top four players has to go anyways, which would make this really easy. If you need to go, you're good. Okay. So one of the top four players had to leave, which means um, we're all set in the finals. So you're in finals, actually. Outstanding. So yeah, just this game, and then we move on to the grand finals. Just this game. Or the not grand finals, but top four from there. Okay, so let's go to news. High Elves have some good minis, and they have some haggard ones for sure, too. Like the High Elf, um, yeah, old school High Elf archers, yeah, they're pretty fun. I, I love the lion chariots and all those units. Dragon Lord on, on a dragon. Yeah, the phoenixes are pretty good. I like the phoenixes, and Shadow Warriors are, these models are amazing. Like Shadow Warriors, I think, are some of the coolest looking models. Yeah, those are rad. Very rad indeed. Okay, so outer region. Did Chosen One step out? Let's see here. Sounds good. <laughs> Tactical DDoS. <laughs> yeah. Is Chosen One coming back? Did he crash? Chosen one, don't don't leave us. Okay, Skaven versus Zinch. That's an interesting one. I mean, I can't help but think it's Zinch favored, but Skaven do have like Howling Warp Gale and plenty of ways to shoot flyers and stuff like that. So um, yeah. Okay, Chosen One is coming back. 
Um, you can do, yeah, they can do Tower of Oath, sure. And um, yeah, we should be fine. And then his opponent is going to be outer. Okay. No problem. And who is he playing against? So just checking this. And that was going to be Sounds good. All right, so they're gonna duke it out here in a second. Players just loading up, just doing a little bit of admin work. We had um, one of our top four players had to go. Stingers had to leave, so that is going to mean this is the only one. So I'm curious about the top four factions we're gonna have. I wouldn't be surprised to see Zinch. Did we actually have anybody play Grand Cathay today? I don't know. I don't know if we did. I'm surprised nobody came in with Grand Cathay to just karate chop. Who are the who are the top uh, who are the top Grand Cathay players? Is there anybody who's like really really good at them in land battle that just like dominates events with them? Yeah, probably not. Kairos right against Skaven. Yeah, like the Gutter Runners and Rattling Gunner Arwar maybe with like Howling Warp Gale could punish him a bit. I mean, Kairos is so nasty though. But I actually like the Exalted Lords of Change because they can summon Furies to shut down missiles and stuff. That's also nice. But you could even go with like any number of like cheap Zinchian characters and probably be fine. Good luck, have fun. Let's get it, man. Let's get it. Good luck, have fun. And uh, I don't know why chosen one's typing to me right now. Got to focus on your game, man. It's go time. No one likes to say, even though they're good. Yeah, that's kind of how it is. Uh, there's zero chance anyway with Kairos, but thanks. <laughs> that's what he says. I mean, he says there's a 0% chance with Kairos in play, but his opponent did not bring Kairos. He, he brought Village the Cursling. Hell yeah, dude, let's go. Let's get it, man. Let's get it. <clears throat> you guys talking about good old YouTube ads? Yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's, it can be pretty, sometimes YouTube just places men out of the blue. Like when, if they appear on stream, that's, Unless, I mean, maybe I could turn them off. Let me, let me I'll, I'll have to investigate that, but yeah, it's always really obnoxious if it happens like in the middle of like a pitch battle or something. Although on YouTube, you can pause and go back. So it's not as big of a deal. The Chad Village play. I know, I know. <clears throat> so for the Zinchi and Hordes, it's going to be Marauders and the recently nerfed Zangors. But Zangors are still pretty good, I think, in this matchup. They're highly armored, silver shielded, pretty aggressive, can definitely push through Skaven front lines with some efficiency. And we got Village the Chadling over here in the bushes. And uh, yeah, he's just going to be there with Pink Fire with his boy Aeacold Hellbrass. Aeacold's great. Just disruptive, grindy, tough to kill in the fourth quarter. Chaos Chariots in the trees. So we got one, two, and uh, Knights of Immolation up in the sky. All right, all right. There you go. He misclicked Village. I don't think it's a misclick. I love Knights of Immolation too. They're very, very disruptive. Their bombardment can like one-shot a clan rat unit, and then they can dive on missiles and do very well. So um, all right, guys. Taking a look here at the old Skaven Hordes of Chosen One. He's got his Night Runners. Let's see if he can break the Skaven uh, losing streak today. I mean, he went three and one today, but you know, every game we've cast with Skaven has been a loss. So we're gonna see if he can break that. On top of that, we got Warplock Gisales and um, yeah, triple Warplock Gisale. That's a lot to protect. That's my only concern with his build is it's very flimsy on the front line with a shit ton of units to protect here, but. We're going to see if he's up to the task. Rat Ogres are very good against Angors too, so at least he does have those. So the battle is on. We do have the Night Runners moving and throwing their old Javelins. Here they come. Warp Lightning Cannons shooting into the Zangors, and here they go. And yeah, it's going to be a shit ton of damage on the approach. Like, it's always going to look pretty rough. And he does have the Night Runners to kind of buffer off the front line, but definitely doesn't want to let them get charged by Zangors. So one Zangor unit going into the can pretty quickly. A second Zangor unit getting very, very beat up. Warp Lightning Cannons doing very nice. On the meantime, on the side, we do see the Chaos Chariots of Outer Region coming around here on the point. Skaven, uh, they just <laughs> performance anxiety? Yeah, Skaven are definitely anxiety playing Skaven. You're just sitting there hyperventilating as a little rat being swarmed. It's um, it's a lot. Now, the caster is going to be a Ruin caster, so Warp Lightning's good. Howling Warp Gale is a staple in this matchup, obviously. And the Dreaded 13th spell is going to be pretty good. So two Zangors are dead already. 
against the Skaven Onslaught, but the Zangors are going to be arriving. Um, I'm surprised they didn't deploy more infantry in the woods, uh, but even still here, they're going to get in, and uh, yeah, it's going to be some damage, as the French would say. Warplock to Zales, shooting over into the Knights of Immolation on the far side, but Zinch is going to be here in a second. We do see Outer Region arriving. He's going to be getting the chariots. He's got one chariot here, one here, and they're going to be pushing into the back line and kind of doing a little bit of work all over that backfield. But Rad Ogres are a, a pretty hard counter. So here comes the Zangors of Outer Region. They've arrived into the front line. The Gracier is there to meet them, as well as the Clan Rats. Giselle's, though, going to be caught in melee already, which is very tough. Um, Giselle's definitely need to do a little bit of kiting. I, I don't know why they're just sitting here and taking this beating, but... One Giselle does get caught. Warp Lightning Cannon is shooting at God knows what. Chosen One looks to be going after the Knights of Immolation here. Um, yeah, so he's got them caught with the Howling Warp Gale and the Warp Storm Scroll. A lot of Ninja Stars going up in the Knights of Immolation. That's some big damage from the Skaven. And the Dreaded 13th spell, I could have sworn I just heard the bell toll. I think that was just the Unholy Clamor as well. But even still, we see the Scorch effects going down here on the side as the Marauders of Zinch swarm in. Rat Ogres and Giselles able to focus down a lot. I mean, man, Knights of Immolation got dunked on. That was super good. And these Skirmishers were still doing very nasty work. And some of the Warplock Giselles are still functional here in this battle. Warp Lightning Cannon rips another shot. And that is a brutal start for Outer Region, guys. He's getting taken to Pound Town by the Skaven army initially. Here we see the Chariots also being taken down by Rat Ogres. And is that going to be the dreaded 13th spell? The Rats... Emerge from the depths of the old world, attacking into the uh, the Marauders in the front, as well as some Zangors. Also doing some very good damage. Need to get those uh, Storm Vermin Halberds in there if they can. And I think Chosen One is taking over this game. He's cleaned up the backfield. Yes, a couple of Gisele units have been caught, but the amount of damage he's done has been really brutal. But is he going to be able to kill Aeacold and Village? That's that's the concern. He needs to keep some Gisele's alive. I mean, Rat Ogres can kind of do it, but it's gonna be it's gonna be very very hard. There's a chance that he could maybe just force army losses, but he needs to keep Giselles alive, get them far away, like out in these various directions, and then so he can shoot at Aeacold and, um, and kite him around and do that kind of damage there, right? But the old uh, Skaven looking pretty good. The dreaded 13th spell in full effect. The Chaos Chariots of Zeech are moving in, but they're going to have a pretty bad time as the little rats will uh, be able to absorb that charge well and then use their Ninja Stars. These are just light chariots. They don't do have that much mass. So they struggle a little bit here. And we do see a really good pink fire from Zinch, though. Jesus, that's a shit ton of damage. But Village getting some work in there. And you know, guys, we saw this earlier. We were like, oh my god, the Skaven are going to beat Zinch. Look at this. But then, like, we're like, oh wait, there's Aeacold and these really tough regenerating characters to kill, right? So I think if you're the Skaven, you need to just kill everything else. Ignore the characters until the bitter end. Maybe you're going to be able to force army losses that way, so then you won't have to fight those characters. The Warp Lightning Cannon... Shooting at a village, doing a little bit of damage. Um, but Aeacold and Village are both making their way over to the Warp Lightning Cannon. Definitely don't want to let that happen. Ideally, you could maybe surround them with Rat Ogres and then run the Warp Lightning Cannon away and reposition it to create some distance. Um, but that's that's going to be easier said than done, right? So Village getting it a little bit. Aeacold Hellbrass in very, very good shape. We do see the Clan Rats battling the Rallying Zangors. And uh, Zangors will trade well, but there are a shit ton of Clan Rats, so... He might be able to win that fight. Rat Ogres and Clan Rats and Skaven Slaves over here on this side able to beat down these Marauders. Chariot's coming back here, and Zinch is kind of creeping around the balance of power. It's definitely Skaven favored, <clears throat> but the fact that they're still in it is pretty big. Aeacold is an unholy nightmare. He's very, very tough to drag down. Very tough. And now the Warp Lightning Cannon is compromised, which when that thing dies, it's going to be a big balance of power shift because that thing's, uh, you know, what, 1,100 gold, something like that? Yeah. Hmm. Sorry, homies, I need a little bit of water there. <clears throat> Scorch effect in the backfield does tickle these Marauders. Meanwhile, the Gracier of Ruin continues to do glorious battle with these uh, units. And he is an anti-infantry armor-piercing unit. I mean, in some ways, he brings something to the table against these Zinchian characters. But both Village and Aeacold, I mean, I believe Village also has the Paragon or the Vessel of Chaos. So yeah, he can heal the shields of nearby units. And he does have the Paragon of Change, which is passive. So he can heal Aeacold's shields which is um, pretty damn good. Does Deathmaster beat Aeacold 1v1? Uh, I suspect he would. Yeah, I, I don't know. He does have that, that scaling damage. It would be an interesting fight. I, I actually don't 100% know. Probably, but maybe not. That'd be, that'd be a, a one that we would have to test for sure. So the Zinchian forces are buckling. We see them pretty much running out of all their infantry. This is a really good play by Chosen One. You want to create that distance and then start ripping shots. Knights of Immolation coming in. Zale's going to try and take him down before they make it in. And uh, looks like they get a couple shots off. Will the Knights of Immolation break? 
They're shaken, trying to force their way to the Gisales. If they can kill those Gisales, being at like, you know, 1% HP, that's pretty big. Nice, nice Howling Warp Gale. That was really good. That locks them down, and they eventually shatter and run. So big, big win there, making uh, making the uh, unit flee and stabilizing your own guns in the backfield. We got more Gisales back online here. And now it's just a matter of time. It's classic Zinch. This is, uh, you know, the old school land battle ways, taking me back to casting tournaments with Sigvald in the days of old, where he would just grind and, uh, you know, endure against hundreds and hundreds of units until the end of uh, end of days, until the end times come. Zinch has got a couple Zangors and Marauders over here. Rats should be able to hunt them down, and there is going to be some Witchcraft over there. What is that going to be? Oh, that's his Inch Army ability, so he's going to be trying to shut down those guys down. Yeah, it's, it's the big one, too. It's the rain. And it does okay damage. Might be able to pick off a couple of these rats. Uh, Aeacold in okay shape. And we do see Village, though, getting a little bit beat up. The Rat Ogres definitely go kill Village. Um, if Village goes, that's probably Army losses. Then you just don't need to deal with Aeacold. Village is, I suppose, a little bit tankier, but overall, I think he's like, at less health right now. Yeah, he's at 2,900, and uh, Aeacold's at 5,000. And heals... Village doesn't heal HP, so killing Village would be the smart play here. 100%. So a couple gutter runners going to be intercepting these Angors that both come back. Both sides going to be uh, taking some substantial casualties. And uh, looking around here, well, Sigvald also has Perfect Vigor, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, does Aeacold have Perfect Vigor, too? He's actually fresh, which is pretty nuts. How's he fresh? Yeah, he gets Vigor from Breath of Life. So, yeah, him and, him and Sigvald are both just, like, disgusting grind characters. I would imagine Chosen One's probably sweating bullets right now, which is really funny. Like, even though the battle looks like it's very good, he's probably sweating bullets. He's probably like, oh god, this is so, so scary. Gisales might be able to clean this up, though. <clears throat> and I think that the Grace here can also be used in tandem with um, any Rat Ogres that are still left. Yeah. To probably win this, we do see Village of the Cursling doing a little bit of juking. So out of region, juking back and forth and back and forth, trying to dodge those shots. Aeacold, in the meantime, being circle beaten by a bunch of Rat Ogres. And, you know, I mean, that's a good answer. If Village gets a little bit more HP, if he goes down to like 15, 1600 HP, that probably would be army losses. Gisele's going to be kiting backwards. Zinch has basically nothing left at this point. Um, I don't see a whole lot. The Bell Cycle Charge, I know. I mean, I honestly think Bell Cycle Charging wouldn't be terrible. Because the Gracers do have 100 armor. So the low armor piercing of Village would be, you know, not certainly not ideal there. God, he's so close to army lossing him. But this is like definitely anxiety inducing, like as for the Skaven player. I, I, do, I do feel his pain. Oh, yeah, the phone's going off. How dare they call me, man. So, Ikid Zap Zap Cannon is going to be uh, in position. Is it going to be ripping some shots into Village here? Maybe it will. Might need to take this phone call after the battle. Could be important. Who knows? But, uh, yes, it's classic stuff. Skaven are going to win this. It's going to be a war of attrition, though. It ain't going to be easy. If the Warp Lightning Cannon can rip a couple good shots here, let's see. Uh, it does make contact. Yeah, just barely. 1,900 HP on this man. Army loss is almost kicking in, ladies and gentlemen. Almost kicking in. Need the dreaded 13th summon to push the bounce of power. Yeah, yeah, that would be pretty clutch, wouldn't it? Village is moving. Uh, Rat Ogres can definitely go in and probably give them the biz a little bit. Pink Fire will do some decent damage. There we see 1529. So Zap is down. Increases the cooldowns by 10 seconds. It's so close to army losses. Come on. You got to put the evil Zeech down. Come on, little rat people. You can do it. And they do get it. GG well played. Oh my god, what a game. That was a really, really scrappy one. That was a really, really scrappy one. And the rats do make the top four. So the Skaven have done it, and Zinch has been defeated. Big shout out to Outer Region, though. He played great today, and he uh, he also brought Village for us in the fourth quarter, which was fun. It wasn't Kairos, which was nice to see. So, um, yeah, fun times, man. Fun times indeed. So now I will advance the top four. So I need to do this real quick. So it's going to be, yeah, I'm going to have to do some shuffling on that. So let's advance the top four. And then we will do that manually here. Praise the Horned Rat. Yes, yes. All right. So going here, going here. Just need to substitute some of the players real quick. So let's see this. And then over on this side, Stingers had to drop. So we will get him. Okay. Those Rat Lightning crews are sweating bullets. I know they were. Oh, God. Yeah, they were They were definitely sweating bullets. <laughs> Take that, human voice. Says someone, why are you guys... Oh, did you say Skaven wouldn't make top four or something? Yeah. I mean, it's certainly not easy, but it's doable, as we can see here. Chosen One has done it. All right. Stand by. And top four here. Okay. So we Outer Region is no longer here, so it's going to be Chosen One. All right. And then on the other side, we are going to have... 
think it was Egos was his name. Let me see what his name was. The other player in the tournament. Um, let's see. Okay. Gotta be no, no wait, it's you. Sorry guys, doing a little bit of backman, uh back backman, back end admin work. Yep, looks fine. All right, so let's get both of those updated here. That's still loading, and that's loading, and then it should be all set. And then we'll be jumping into the top four here real quick. Uh, I'll just need to take a quick phone call, make sure no disasters are happening. A thousand years of Skaven DLC, yeah. We'll see about that. We'll see about that. All right, so that's done. And top four time. Hey, Drew, you're going to come back and defend your, your Skaven belt? All right. Top four is live. Uh, I will only cast one side. Look, have fun. Then finals, I will cast. So just play. Okay, so we're going to cast the game between... Um, I believe we haven't seen either of these players playing today. This is our top four. So you have chosen one. Um, somebody, some teacher, I think was his name. Uh, and then Seagulls versus Raced here. So we'll, we'll cast this game here. So I'm going to go ahead and message those players and uh, go from there. So let's do this. I'll cast your game. Spec slot and password, please. All right, guys. I'll be back in just a second while we wait for this game to get started. Uh, let me find the lobby first. Should be around here somewhere. Yeah, I don't see it up yet. So we'll get there in a moment. And I will be back in just like two minutes, give or take. BRB.
All right, guys, we're back in business. Let's get this game going. Sorry about that. And uh, where were we? Grand Finals, yes. Uh, all right, so oh, wow, there's a lot of, lot of stuff here. A lot of games. So join with code. And let's go ahead and do this. Cast this game. And here we go, baby. Thanks for your patience. It's my landlord calling. You know, the old, uh, the old, the old landlords. Ah, so we have, uh, we have Zinch versus Kislev. Very sweaty. And then on the top side, I know we have Skaven. And I don't know who the other side was on the top side. Let's see who's, who he's playing. Um, so, yeah, who's that individual playing? Could it be the Blessed the, the blessed Corn? That would be pretty interesting. Okay. Okay. I will take a look. Okay. Uh, no problem. I will fix it after. Okay. Outstanding. So here we go, baby. Let's have some fun. Let's get it. Uh, don't believe... Okay, cool, cool. A little bit of adminning, but I think we're all set. It's the Bretonian. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah. His name is, yeah, Roost Warrior. Yeah. Bretonia, huh? I'm excited to see some Bretonia. Uh, excited to see the Henry Cavill 40K show. Yeah, it should be fun. Absolutely, man. My Power Fantasy is a, uh, a fantasy show, though. Like, I think, I think if they did a really good buddy cop show with Gotrek and Felix, holy shit, that'd be so good. Like, imagine the first season they go to Carrick Eight Peaks. Like, the so the first season of the Gotrek and Felix TV show is obviously, you know, the initial episode would be Gotrek meeting Felix and Altdorf and saving him during the riots and then the oath being sworn and, you know, seeing the, the interesting dynamic of Felix realizing he's in over his head when, like, Gotrek drags him around the old world and stuff and eventually their journey to Carrick Eight Peaks and delving into the depths like D&D &D style with that party. It has like the Bretonian Paladin. It would be so good. It'd be so good. I think a Gotrek and Felix TV show would just be top tier. Eddie Hall looks like Gotrek. Yeah, he's just too big because he's like, Eddie Hall like looks short when he's standing next to Thor, but he's not. He's like six, I think he's like six something. He's a big dude. Yeah, a Gotrek and Felix show I think would be top tier. Who would you cast as Felix though? Who would you cast as Felix Yeager? Um, you know, there, I can think of some good actors, but Felix is is not like a uh, older. I mean, Felix is a younger man. I think he's like in his twenties or thirties. Uh, but you know, he ages pretty quickly being out on the road with Gotrek. Like it describes that in the books. Like it'll talk about how like Felix looks much older now. He's 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 road worn. Things like that. <clears throat> Alejandro Wild rumors. Those rumors will have to come to fruition, I guess. Electron, thank you, man. Thank you for being a member for that long. And Sly, great way to kick off the new year. Yeah, I'm, I'm super hyped, man. Ryan Gosling's probably a little bit older. Nicolas Cage? No, oh my God, Nicolas Cage. That would be something. No, Jamie Lannister's, the actor's too old. He's he's in, he's in his 40s, or maybe, maybe even early 50s now. It would have to be somebody in their like late 20s, probably, early 30s. Um, Gotrek would be tricky to cast, because... Yeah, well, I don't know. Just some someone who's jacked and a little bit stockier. Um, I don't know. Yeah, plenty of choices. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are in the semifinal of today's tournament. It's going to be Kislev facing off against Zinch. And uh, Zinch looking extra villainous, extra evil here today. So we do have uh, ODM land battle. And uh, he's facing off against Race. So it's going to be Mother of Stankia, front battle line of Armored Kossars, backed up by the Akshina Ambushers, and Triple Streltsy. Okay, man. Sign me up for this. <clears throat> I really like that. I really like that. Yeah, I think, uh, I think that these guys are going to be pretty cool. And, you know, Powder Fire is a little bit harder to dodge than Missile Fire. Mother of Stankia shooting up at the bird in the sky. And she does actually hit. Kairos, not that it gets through shields or anything like that, but the Stank is hiding in the trees because she knows she's going to get blue fire spammed. So trying to hope that the blue fire will hit some of the trees instead. And it might. Yeah, see, that blue fire was a complete miss. 
I think like one of the missiles hit there. So that's pretty huge here for uh, Raced. That's very, very nice. So Streltsy, things in the woods. In the back, it's going to be the Mordheim Beowulfs, so the ROR variant. <clears throat> and looking here at the uh, the old Zichian forces, it's going to be Chaos Knights. Oh, God. I can only be so erect. Three units of Chaos Knights of Zich. Oh, hell yeah. Triple Chaos Knight. It, guys, I don't think it gets much better than this. I don't think it gets much better than this. This is great. You got blues, marauders, a couple zangors in the front. A little bit of skirmishing going down from Zinch as they do attack with the soul grinder here. So the soul grinder throwing some javelins into the Mordheim Beowulfs. Up in the sky, though, you know, Kairos not having the best time. His shields have been penetrated, but he is juking pretty efficiently and dodging a lot of those shots right there. Over here, Mother Ostankia is going to continue hiding in the tree line till it's a little bit safer to come out here. Dave Bautista as Gotrek would be interesting for sure. Yeah, get him a huge beard. They would have to do some of what they did with Gimli, with Jonathan Reese davies in uh, Lord of the Rings. Like, use perspective and CGI to make him look shorter. Yeah, I think it'd be really fun. I think it'd be really fun. So, Blue Fire going in against the Mordheim Beowulfs, being very, very strong. Zinch just kind of chilling back in the Shadow Realm with their triple Chaos Knights. They're trying to take advantage of the skirmishing as much as they possibly can, using their Soul Grinders to poke a little bit. Uh, but Kislev's just kind of slow pushing them. They're getting their advance on, and honestly, not any serious damage really has been taken. The Streltsy have taken a little bit of HP damage, but nothing too bad. And uh, Zeech will be... I'm really curious about the Chaos Knights, like how they're going to be efficient. I can't help but think there's so much armor on the Kislev roster that the Chaos Knights not, might not be the most powerful thing in the world. Um, spells are Pendulum, Blue Fire, as well as Regrowth here for old uh, Zeech. And now we get a little bit of Daka going into the Soul Grinders. Pulling back to the edge here. Got to be a little bit careful. Are we going to get our first rule break of the day? The dreaded uh, white line camping in the back. We're going to have to see. We're going to have to see. Hopefully there's some people who would be a little bit better on the rules than I. But he's definitely put, cutting it a little bit close. Because like the amount of room there is to flank in this uh, position is getting a little bit dangerous here. So Pendulum goes and misses pretty horribly. <clears throat> as Race continues moving in. Soul Grinder of Zinch is going to be retreating away right now. Meanwhile, the Akshina Ambushers are going to uh, keep pressing up and a very good tool against this armor if they can. Now the Zinch army is going to be moving up. They, maybe maybe they're listening to the stream and they heard the warning about the White Line camping and they're like, okay, never mind. Let's go advance. Let's go advance up. Mother Ostankia here, now going to be emerging from her, uh, from her slumber as a lot of Kislev hybrid shooting is coming in. Man! Look at Kairos getting mowed down. He's going to have to use a regrowth, but the Chaos Knight's going to be diving straight into the front line. Kairos moves in and does get hit by a Flock of Doom, which is interesting. And uh, I guess that's to prevent shield regeneration. Also, the Oracle of Eternity is going to be active, but that's a shitload of firepower, guys. Even with 44% ward save, like, Kairos could straight up die here. So we get the uh, Kossavite Dervishes as well as the Things in the Woods engaging against Chaos Knights. I just can't help but feel the Chaos Knights aren't going to be, like, super cost-effective here. Could be wrong, but we do see Kairos going uh, and taking a shit ton of damage. He's going to just run away and probably regrowth himself. Other stank engaging, and in the backfield, they do get Chaos Knights getting into Streltsy, but the Mordheim Beowulfs are really good armor-piercing fighters. They, of course, hit really, really hard with their AP, and uh, we'll be able to potentially mow down these Chaos Knights. We do see their HP going down pretty quickly. And the thing is, Streltsy are also great weapon fighters, so Streltsy can hold their own against Chaos Knights. It's not going to be a great fight, but they can do okay. So Kairos scurrying around. He's been uh, hit by another Flock of Doom. Now, Flock of Doom won't do a ton of damage against him, but it will prevent shield regeneration for a duration of time. And Kairos does get a regrow, so that's going to be topping him off a little bit. It looks like Kislev is trading pretty well in most of the fights here. Chaos Knights on the front line getting a little bit beat up, but so too is the front line here of Kislev. Definitely need to fan out these units if you can. So Streltsy both going to be running away, trying to avoid the Zinch's Firestorm, which will be coming down in just a moment. That was a good gaze of fate. A little bit late on the trigger, though, but it still does uh, allow them to take some damage right here. This is not the final. This is a semifinal. And then after this, we have the grand final. There's another side of the bracket that's being played right now. So Chaos Knights moving into the front again, battling against the armored Kossar. Streltsy have reformed ranks, and the Streltsy units are performing very well. Um, they're doing a ton of DPS. They're keeping Kairos in check, and also their AP fighters with great weapons. So if they do get attacked by Chaos Knights, like I said, they're going to be able to hold their own. So... Streltsy continuing to blast away against the old uh, Kairos man. Things in the woods, battling Chaos Knights in the uh, in the woods, but despite being things of the woods, they probably don't want to be fighting there, unsupported, so moving back into the main battle line. And now we get the Streltsy ripping fat shots into those Chaos Knights in the center, and those Chaos Knights get eviscerated by the Kislevite firepower. Very nice. Another pendulum going down from Kairos, a bit of a swing and a miss. Doesn't seem to do that much damage. Overall, though, it's a pretty damn pitched fight. Mother Ostankia still in decent health. 
Does she have her goulash? She does have it, so she has access to a little bit of healing. I'm surprised we haven't seen any Patriarchs today um, in the Kislev games we have casted. I feel like having a Patriarch is just always super good against Inge. Well, Chaos Knight's going to be trying to dive the backfield now, moving on top of the Streltsy. Things in the woods, the Mordheim Beowulfs are hot in pursuit, and the Mordheim Beowulfs will be super, super solid with this rear charge as they get into the back of the Chaos Knights and will start to drag down some of these models. Block of Doom going down here, and Dark Tainted Blood. No healing received, which obviously, you know, regrowth won't be on the table here. And it does lower their speed a little bit too, which I suppose isn't irrelevant. Kislev cleaning up a lot of the front line. Things in the woods and Mother of Sankia doing well. Some Chaos Knights still duking it out on the flanks. Kairos, his healing is pretty insane, and he seems to count for a lot on in terms of the balance of power. Um, both sides have access to a little bit of healing, but certainly the healing does go in the favor of Old Zeech. And those Chaos Knights do finally get buckled off. The Streltsy should be able to stabilize here. We got 50 Streltsy here, 44 here. The ones on the far side do appear to have been taken down by these Chaos Knights, though, which could allow the Cairo shenanigans to really, really shine. But the Mordheim Beowulfs and all of the things in the woods seem to be doing some pretty brutal damage against Zeech on the ground. Um, Zeech still does have its Soul Grinder back here, which is also quite massive. I suppose I wasn't really taking this thing into account when I was looking at the balance of power. But yeah, having this constant anti-large poke against Mother Ostankia is quite good. It's gotten 1,200 value. Um, what Race needs to do is he needs to get his dervishes and go go pin that thing down. I mean, at the very least, it would keep it tar pitted and keep Mother Ostankia functional for a longer period of time. But Kislev's hybrid shooting probably will help them edge this game out, I think. It's going to be very tight, and certainly the other side could win it, depending on, you know, blunders and things like that. But the, the hybrid shooting on the, the Kossai dervishes, and not Kossai dervishes, but the armored Kossars, is going to be quite fat. So Chaos Knight's getting engaged once again by the Mordheim Bale Wolves as well as the other units. You you can see the Zinch player doing his best to kill all the shooting, which is obviously very smart. Uh, as far as Mother Ostanke goes, she's in decent shape. And a uh, little bit of a misplay black here. This is a, a decent little blunderoo. The Kossify Dervishes need to probably cruise across and uh, go after that Soul Grinder of Zinch. And we will see what they can do. So the battle rages on, ladies and gentlemen. Here we see old uh, Kairos Fate Weaver. Slightly surrounded, but I think the uh, the Sons of Kislev probably going to be edging this one out against the villain of Zinch forces. And you know what? I didn't think I'd be saying this in 2024, but it would appear that old, uh, that old, uh, <laughs> the old uh, Streltsy were able to edge this one out. They felt very, very good. They felt very, very good indeed. So Streltsy pulling back now. Kairos a little bit beat up. Mother Ostankia is going in for the kill to try and finish off Kairos, which is certainly not a bad idea. Here we see the Soul Grinder of Zinch being uh, tar pitted by things in the woods, which is going to be super good against it. In tandem with the Streltsy Overwatch Fire that is going down here. Kairos looking like he's on death's bed, ladies and gentlemen. He's running for the hills. Setting at 2 leadership, 19 leadership. Might just get rear charged and pounded here. By He's getting the stank, baby. The stank's all over him. Shake and wavering, negative 1. And that probably is going to be disintegrating, which is just going to be uh, GG well played. So with that, it looks like we could have ye old Kislev pulling out the W here against the Zeech. Yeah, GG well played. That was a great game. That was a great game. The Chaos Knights felt like an interesting pick to me. I I can't help but feel they're suboptimal against them, but maybe, you know, I'm just out of the loop in the land battle meta. I just feel like Kislev has so much good armor that they're able to kind of absorb those Chaos Knight charges. And he didn't bring the ROR, actually. So are they, like, banned in the rules or something? I feel like they're still super good. Like, why would you not bring the ROR with that snare if you're going to bring that? The Degenerate Kairos getting up in the sky. He able to, is able to stabilize, which is pretty big. Um, I don't think there's any way that Zinch can win at this point, though. Uh, they're just gonna they're just gonna pay the troll toll here. So we do see the armored Kossars shooting across. Uh, Soul Grinder of Zinch moving in to do glorious battle here and uh, give him the old stanky leg. Yeah, he is. So here comes the Soul Grinder moving in, taking the Kossars to Pound Town. But yeah, the guns there's still plenty plenty of Streltsy and plenty of hybrid shooting, all of which will be very good here. And uh, as soon as this big beastie goes down. That's going to be army losses for sure. I don't know how Kairos survived that. Goulash going down. Very nice. Healing and leadership. Always always a decent variable in the fourth quarter. But yes. Crumbling demons. Army losses all over the place. And Zinch has been banished to the Shadow Realm from whence they came. Kairos moment. J just Kairos things. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, that's good. Little peak. Will peak. All right. So, GG well played, guys. Fun match there. Awesome to see Streltsy on the table. Streltsy are very fun. And, uh, yeah. That's it. Chaos Knights, I have to admit, this is a, this is a man after my own heart. With the triple, triple Chaos Knights are very, very heavy metal. I mean, they did okay, actually. 1,100 
you know, thousand on this one, but yeah, that, that like, you know, it was Streltsy, 1200, 900, 900 value there. Things in the woods obviously did good. And Mother Ostanke is incredibly powerful as well. So, all right, let's see if we're ready for the grand finals. <clears throat> there we go. And uh looks like the top side is still going right now. It looks like it's still going. Yeah, no drama there. Okay, I've been tagged in the general chat. Did somebody need somebody need something? I don't think so. Okay. I think we're all fine. So let's hang tight for a couple minutes and uh, just wait. Wait for the grand finals. So we have the stank in the grand finals with Kislev. Not surprised. Kislev seems to have always been pretty good in land battle. I mean, and I, I feel like maybe some of their natural predators aren't here, you know, like Cathay. I feel like Cathay would be very good against them in land battle. What is the meta for Cathay in land battle anyways? I, I would imagine they can do a bunch of things, right? They can do degenerate boxes if they want to. They can do gun lines that are pretty effective. <clears throat> you guys missed the old Slanesh bots. That would be that would be truly coming full, full circle. Major Mula, thank you for the donation. And Cork, thank you for the three bucks as well. I greatly appreciate that, man. Thanks for supporting the old stream. It's been fun, man. Been fun hanging with you guys. Feels feels like an old school, old school kind of stream. I do like how fast the the, the battles are. You know, it's fun to be able to, to move through those quickly. Granted, the tournament takes about the same amount of time because we have to wait for the other rounds to finish. Uh, did they finish it? Let's check. Refreshing. Report. Let me tell them to report the scores too. Okay, so he reported the score. Um, I will message chosen one. Let me know when done. Escape, escape, <coughs> escape versus Kissel finals could be kind of cool. The meta differences between Dom and Land Battle is kind of funny. Yeah. Kairos is, uh, yeah, yeah, Kairos is definitely better in, in uh, land battle than Dom. Because in Dom, in Dom, the game will be forced to end by the objectives, but in land battle, he can really drag the game out and use his heals and his, his obscene amount of wins of magic that he has from the from the death passive too. So that's that's what really makes him quite quite crunk. Uh, yeah, no, Carl Franz is squishier than Mother Ostanke, which is incredibly stupid. Like, a chariot shouldn't be tankier than an Imperial Griffin. That's really stupid. <clears throat> CA is pretty potato when it comes to designing a lot of the a lot of the units. They do a good job with some, but sometimes it's just like, what the hell are they thinking with that? Yeah, Cathay cannons are really good. I don't know what it is. They seem stronger than the Empire ones. I'd have to look at the back end stats. Uh, no, Cathay isn't garbage in Dom mode. They're not as they're not like S tier or anything, but they're not like terrible either. Okay, so how are we looking here? Game is still going. Yeah, Franz is pretty damn squishy. And, you know, Stank is Stank is just, I think, has, like, missile resist, too. I mean, Franz has more armor, I think, but, yeah, it's not going to make up for, like, almost 2,000 HP. The chariot is made from hardwood. Oh, yeah, that's what it is, Pone. That's right. It's the dreaded hardwood. I don't think we have enough time for me to do a battle. <clears throat> so I think we're going to have to chill out for a minute here. Uh, finally, some Warhammer, Warhammer 3, you mean? Yeah, we're still on Warhammer 3. It's not War, This isn't Warhammer 2. We're still on the old third game here. Yeah, I wanna, I've, been, I've been having an itch to play Tomb Kings. Ever since Tomb Kings have gotten their, like, you know, their hype built up from the old world and how they're getting all their old models back, I've been, like, just eyeing the Tomb Kings in this game. <clears throat> I played Dwarves earlier. What would I change if I was playing Dwarves? I wonder if... um. I wonder if you could go with a Screaming Meme Catapult build. Happy New Year. Super appreciative of the land battle stream starting things off. Hey, Glorfindel, I got you, man. There will be more to come. I'll, I'll try and do at least one land battle tournament maybe once a week, once every two weeks. I'll throw one in there. You know, kind of at the same pace, I'll be doing Dom, Dom tourneys as well until we get some new stuff. Yeah, Cathay does seem very boring. <clears throat> I wonder if you could, like, do this against Dwarves. Okay, something like that. One sec, I gotta go let the Chihuahua out. She's 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 barking at me. Glorfindel, thank you again. Come on, Lola. All right, the Chihuahua was just barking at the mailman, so. 
I love Haggard Artillery Armies. It's like my favorite. Um, how deep in the insanity could we go if we were playing dwarves? <laughs> how, how absolutely nutty could we get? So we could bring... Hmm, who would be... Like, Cetra... Cetra is a decent AP fighter. We could do, like, a really cheap Cetra with just spell spam. Maybe with Syrians. I don't know. God, he's so expensive. Even on even just on foot, Cetra is like an arm and a leg. Uh, I guess we would just go foot Arkin, probably. If you were going to play this Mimi playstyle. Uh, Curse is probably not that good. Um, Libra Mortis, sure. And we could just bring Spirit Leech. This would be a pretty hilarious... <laughs> I don't even know if this would be legal in land battles. Like double casket. The problem is you would have a big trouble killing dwarf characters. So what you would probably want to do is get like a Cameron War Sphinx to cycle charge them or something. Oh my god, this build would just be absurd. Like four Mima Pults plus plus a, a casket. Then you just spirit leech spam the dwarf characters and then use the Cameron War Sphinx. This is a pure meme build. This is a pure meme build. I don't know. It, it could work though. It could work. Yeah, chariots are super micro intensive. They're, you're, you're correct. They require a ton of micro. Because you have to drag them through your opponent's ranks. Uh, filler match, I don't think we have enough time. I, this game's been going a while <clears throat> between Chosen One and um, Roost Warrior, so we need to we need to give that a, a moment to finish. Yeah, should be should be ready in a moment. If Kislev loses, grandma gets 2k HP next patch. Oh my god. No, I, I don't think they'll... I don't think, like... I Yeah, see, it, it's interesting, you know, because the, prog the program that got canceled, the one that was the... Um, the one that we... That was how we communicated with the developers about bound stuff. So I, I don't know what that's going to look like in the future. Um, yeah, so we'll see what that looks like. Speaking of artillery, the state of the Vampire Coast is pretty sad. Vampire Coast is an interesting one. I would love to play some... I think Coast is better in land battle than they are in Dom. Bone Giants are viable in a couple matchups. Actually, they're used against Chaos Dwarves, because Bone Giants are very good against Chaos Dwarf artillery. Like, if you um, <clears throat> if you get Dawi Zar here... Let me show you what this looks like real quick. And you just get, like, uh, let's say, a Death Shriek or whatever. And you, you get a Boner Giant. Let me show you what this looks like. Okay, yeah, let's Alpine Ridge. So let's do um, Crossroads. Crossroads is a is a good testing map. Yeah, we'll show you what this looks like real quick. Super still building his army. Oh my god, dude. Yeah, Lucina. I suspect so. When I used to play land battle tourneys in Warhammer Two, that was what I would often do against dwarves. And then I would use Ark in the Black to like run interference and drop skeleton summons on their missiles and stuff. It was pretty damn strong. Coast can do crab things in land battles, yeah. Yeah, crabs are crabs are decent, especially the ROR one that has some decent healing. <clears throat> Old Vampire Coast, huh? Yeah, they're they're a classic faction. I remember when they were turbo OP, but yeah. Like, Bone Giants, I would bring a Bone Giant against Charfs, because Charfs usually will bring at least one artillery piece or like a Flying Lord that's big, so the Boner Giant can put some pressure on them. Although it's, I don't know if it's like the most optimal thing, but in Dom, it's Bone Giants are used by top tier players against Chaos Dwarfs because um, of how good Death Freaks are. Yo, I, I love I love Ushapti Great Bows. When the Old World comes out, I'm going to get like three units of Ushapti Great Bows. They're just, they're just so cool. I don't care how bad they are or good. We'll see. Yeah, so basically you just use your boner giant to just um, shoot at enemy Chorf artillery, right? Because Chorf artillery is so slow. Look at look how like hard my bone giant's winning this fight. Uh, he's he's trading super well, and like you can also use it to snipe characters and things like that too, right? So immediately we see the death Rock rocket launchers like toast, and then from there like that it's already done its job. That's huge, right? So then you can use it to shoot at like flying lords and you know all sorts of different things like that. It's it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Okay, so it looks like they have finished. Should we have our grand finals? It's going to be Bretonia versus Kislev. Interesting. So that is our that is our grand final for today. Uh, his opponent is... Let me find him. Okay. Score and lobby code, please. All right. 
Actually, you know what? I'll just invite them to my lobby. It'll be a little bit easier to manage that. Uh, turn finals. All right. So host game is spectator. The dreaded password of one, two, three. Most forbidden password in all of the old world. Okay. And then his opponent is going to be... Um, his opponent was... The kit, yeah, it was. Let me find him. Some faces I'm not super familiar with. <clears throat> their names don't match their uh, Discord names. All right, one, two, three. All right, cool. So we should be all set. Players will be joining in just a moment, and we have the map for the grand finals is going to be what? It's going to be, oh, baby, the pillar of bone, my all time favorite, the bone zone. Welcome to the Bone Zone, ladies and gentlemen. It is going to be good times. Yes. I made blueprints for an armored model of Ushapti Aesthetic. It's just a shame I can't afford Oh, yeah. Is it a 3D printed thing? How to stay to the balance of the game? Uh, it, it's, different. it's different. It depends on Dom and land battle. I mean, it's considering how many factions there are, it's got okay balance. But yeah, it has its issues. But it's still fun. We, we like this game because of Warhammer, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> Oh god, are you guys talking about how awful the Rings of Power is? Nothing. That Rings of Power is so awful. It's such a disgrace to Lord of the Rings. I, I really went in with an open mind, too. Like, I watched Rings of Power. I was like, I was I was trying to just be optimistic. Like, every episode, I was like, oh, something cool is going to happen. There's going to be a character I'm really going to feel connected with and really enjoy. But no, it was just, oh god, dude, I can't believe, I can't believe that's a thing. I really tried to like it. I really, really tried. Like the fight scenes were just shitty. I'm just like, like you go back to like Peter Jackson's, like the two towers. You remember how like even a small fight, one of like the most epic scenes in the movie is when you get, when you get the, uh, so the Rohirrim ref refugees are heading to Helm's Deep and they get attacked by the war riders. That was like kind of like a small -ish thing, right? But like it's, he still managed to make that so epic. You know, that like clash, it was so intense and so good. And then like Rings of Power, like that final battle with the Numenorians, like they have those like stupid nets they're dragging over the orcs. And it was just like, their armor looks like shit. Like the fighting looks stupid. It was, it's just so bad. It's so bad. There's a couple elements of that the Rings of Power did well. Like the depiction of, um, of Numenor was really cool. Like I thought the city building was really nice. Uh, I thought that some of the aesthetics of the orcs was kind of cool. They were very scary. Like the wargs were also very scary. Um, but yeah, it was it was bad. Yeah, the Witcher show is pretty haggard too. Although honestly, if I had to choose between the Witcher TV show and Rings of Power, I would take the Witcher all day. Yeah. Because I at least enjoy watching Henry Cavill. But you know, yeah, the armor the armor looked like it was it was so haggard. I don't know what it is. Yeah, Pone thinks yeah, the <laughs> Pone thinks the end of Game of Thrones is good, I know. I love it. Pone's always always great. You gotta love it, man. Rings of Power is really good if you don't think it, of it as Lord of the Rings. That's an interesting perspective. Like, yeah, if you weren't looking at it through the lens of Lord of the Rings, you might like it might have been like more yeah. You could definitely definitely have some different opinions on it. But yeah, it's um it's so bad. It's so bad. God, and like, why do these studios make these dog shit when the template is there, dude? It, it's not like you need to... The template for success in the Lord of the Rings universe is there. Just copy it. Copy the aesthetic, the the dialogue, the, the you know... It's all there. The, the, the template is there for you. The Hobbit was haggard as hell, but, you know, obviously um, the original Lord of the Rings trilogy, I mean, just just just, you know, copy pasta, man. I don't know. The Fallout TV show? Yeah, we'll see. I, I hope it's good. I love post-apocalyptic uh, like as a genre in general. It's really fun. Wheel of the Time was also terrible. I agree. I My wife and I watched the entire show, and we were just cringing the whole way. We were just like, oh, God, we, but we finished it. Yeah. It's not even the rights. It's like the show, the show just, the, the casting, the, the diet, like the dialogue, I don't know. It just it just all felt janky as hell. <clears throat> yeah, just felt really janky. 
I mean, man, lo- like look at the cast of the original Lord of the Rings trilogy. You have Viggo Mortensen, Ian McKellen, <clears throat> Christopher Lee. Elijah Wood was like the perfect Frodo. Samwise Gamgee. I mean, God, all those actors are so good. Like, is there anyone in the original trilogy who's like poorly cast? I mean, sure. There's a lot of variants from the books. If you've read the Lord of the Rings books, there's a lot of differences with the show and or with the movies and the books. But like, it's still really enjoyable. Yeah. Anyways, we'll rant about that for another day. We'll save it for another day. Now we're here for the grand finals, ladies and gentlemen. It is time. Let the Nurglings feast. So, taking a look here at the forces of the lady, it's going to be the Roost Warrior with Alberic and also Royal Hippos. So, I love this combo. This is one of my favorite power fantasies. So, you bring in the Royal Hippogriff Knights, you put them with Alberic, the Trident of Manon, or the Braid of Bordelow, excuse me. It gives them anti-large. So, suddenly you have these beasts, these Royal Hippogriff Knights with anti-large bonus that just shred everything. And Triple Grail Guardian. Oh, yeah, dude. Oh, yeah. So Grail Guardians are tanky. They have good armor piercing, pretty good sustained fighters. Not as much of a shock cap unit as Grail Knights, but a more, a little bit more durable, which in the Kissel of Grind might be better. I think that's very fun. Frontline's going to be men at arms and peasant mobs and uh, obviously trash units because of the prevalence of the uh, Grail Guardian. So very, very exciting. Very exciting. Now for the forces of Kislev, it's going to be raced. He's got armored Kossars as well as Mother Ostankia. Classic stuff. Stank is very good. We got some Oath Brothers of Tor, so we have the Bear Rider Arwars, which I think is going to be super clutch. Uh, they, of course, will be useful against the Grail Guardians. With the Patriarch providing healing, they'll be even even better. Um, did he bring the passive healing item? So he brought the Lullaby, but why would you... Oh, he did bring it. Okay, I was going to say, if he didn't bring the passive healing item, I'd be really shocked. We have the Incarnate Elemental Beasts. No surprises here. Anti-Large, Mortis Engine, very good against all these big targets. And uh, that is going to be that. <clears throat> it's going to be a scrappy-ass battle. A little bit of Vanguard in the back. Kind of cute. He's got some Kossify Dervishes in the trees, but I mean, there's not going to be a whole lot to flank. The reason why he's doing this is in case his opponent goes with Trebuchet Spam. A viable strategy I would feel against Bretonia on a bigger map or against Kislev on a bigger map would be Trebuchet Spam. Uh, they'd be very good against this, the tightly packed elite infantry, but on this map, it's too small to really generate enough value. So I think you have to go <clears throat> a little bit um, harder in the paint. Yeah, Sean Bean too is great too as well. They definitely did Faramir a little bit dirty in the movies. I mean, I still enjoyed his character a lot, but compared to like his book depictions, um, if we're talking Lord of the Rings and all that. Yeah, man. Let the good times roll. Hope you're all doing well. Drop a like in the stream if you're enjoying these uh, this hot action here. And Mother Ostankia is now preparing for battle. She's going to move forward. Does she have her bear launcher? She does not. <clears throat> Amber Spear, Flock of Doom, as well as the Goulash. So we're going to see what kind of uh, bows are going to be dropped here. Nice shot from the stank there on the men at arms. And we do see the Grail Guardians and Hippogriff Knights waiting on the flanks. Most likely getting ready to move forward. As yeah, these peasants look quite eager to get slaughtered. They're moving in. They're like, let's go, man. And now we see the hybrid shooting of Kislev moving in. Peasant mobs getting uh, mowed down pretty effectively. Mother Osankia also using her Daka. But I'm really eager to see the Grail Guardians. I want to see how those guys do in combat. And why are the Hippogriff Knights being so conservative? Is it a lapse of micro or is he just not pulling them forward? Because I feel like Bertonia is blundering a little bit by not alpha striking everything at once. Because a lot of their infantry is going to get killed before their cavalry arrive. But we'll have to see how this all turns out. <clears throat> we will have to see. So here comes the Grail Guardians. Grail Guardians with magic damage will be pretty good against the things in the woods. And also with their good AP value should be okay against Kossars. But the Oath Brothers of Tor are going to be moving in. Plenty of anti-large. Kislev does have the healing advantage too. The uh, Patriarch is going to be healing the entire blob here, and the Incarnate Elemental Beast able to rip some nice shots. But if Bretonia can get the Isolation on the Incarnate Elemental and surround it with the Anti-Large Hippogriff Knights, that could be incredibly strong. And it looks like they are going to be taking the fight here. So we get Grail Guardians, and guys, the Grail Guardians all have Anti-Large because of Alberic. That is so good. I mean, why bring Grail Knights? We need to have Grail Guardians with Anti-Large here, right? It seems very, very strong. Nonetheless, though, Kislev is doing what Kislev does best, which is just disgusting fat blobs. And we do see Bretonia pulling back right here. And uh, the Kislevite force is going to continue hunting. The Hippogriff Knight's a little bit beat up, as is Alberic. He does use the scroll of shielding on himself. And uh, honestly, looking to be a pretty good engagement for old Kislev so far. Uh, they were able to drag down many of the Grail Guardians, and the Bretonian's going to be fleeing the scene. And there's no Fey Enchantress here. Fey Enchantress, her Mortis Engine would help a ton. 
in these blob fights and lowering enemy melee attack as well. Chalice of Potions on the Elite Infantry would be quite impactful. And now Bretonia is going to be hustling back in here. Uh, Bretonia's caster is going to be a Damsel of Life. No surprises there. Going to be trying to drop some heals. And now the Roost Warrior has re-engaged here. Hippogriff Knight's uh, piling in, but Kislev is, is not without teeth here, man. They have the Incarnate Elemental Beast. They do also have the uh, Oath Brothers of Tor. They have a lot of anti-large, which is able to trade very cost-effectively. And the uh, passive land battle, not passive land battle, but the passive healing from the uh, Patriarch is uh, is so good. It's just going to be providing so much value here for the army. And oh my god, look at this bounce of power. Jesus, Bretonia is getting squashed. They're getting absolutely squashed by the Kislevites. Like all these Grail Guardians are having such a bad time. It, it, I can't help but think that maybe like a wide peasant archer army with some trebuchets and like some Knights of the Realm would just be better. It seems like the elite Bretonians are just being torn to shreds by this disgusting Death Star. Just absolutely brutal. So Patriarch, a little bit of a blunder here by race. Definitely needs to keep that Patriarch in the blob. But guys, are we going to see army losses already? Jesus, what a karate chop. That was just brutal. I was like, oh, this is going to be like a high micro game. This is going to be nuts. But, uh, you know, sometimes it's like this. And the Hippogriff Knight's charging back in here. But talk about an absolute slaughter. The Kislevites butchering the Bretonians here uh, on the field of battle and showing them who the King of Cavalry truly are, I would suppose. Things in the woods. Well, not not even cavalry. The king of monsters. The monsters are what won this game, right? The incarnate elemental is being pretty brutal. Mother Sank is nasty, and Oath Brothers of Tor still around, causing plenty of havoc. You can see they're in really, really good shape here. And um, yeah, Kislev looks like they're going to pull this one out. I mean, I can see army losses going off in a second. Yeah, it's really close. It's really close. That's what she said. And uh, yeah, overall, just the Kislev blob was way more powerful. Like Bretonia could not fight them at a blob. Just the anti-large bonus, uh, anti-large bonuses, the durability, um, just brutal stuff. And Mother Asanki, of course, uh, very, very impactful there too. A little bit of hybrid shooting. How are army losses not proc, by the way? It should be going through right now, any second. He's wavering. Yeah, I don't know how army losses has not proc'd off. And uh, that is going to be that. GG, well played, man. Oh my god. This is the history proving uh, what happens when non-gunpowder faces gunpowder. Yeah, except there's like, it's ma mainly just mythical beasts. It's not so much gunpowder, right? Uh, but there's a little bit of gunpowder. Yeah, this is historically accurate. Yes, the, uh, the monstrous beasts turning the tide of war. This tournament has, yeah, no, we've had a ton of great games today. A ton of great matches. This certainly was not one of them, but it was still fun to see. You know, seeing the, a good karate chop here and there was always fun. Yeah, and also the Beowulfs, the Bordheim Beowulfs and the Blob countering all the healing, right? So the Bretonian army can't heal if they're in a Blob fight. This is a very well thought out build from our Kistle player. Even though it looks like it might be, you know, fairly simplistic, it's uh, it's very, very strong. And at this point, I don't even know why the Kistle player or Bretonian player is still in the game. Like, what, is he going to rally these six Grail Guardians and defeat this full force? Like, why, why are there, why is army, is army losses turned off? Why are there, why, what is this? Uh, do you guys, can anybody explain this? I, I'm fairly certain it should be army lost. Patriarch's over here. The Kislev of Army's coming over. Uh, and yeah, I, I don't know how this is an army losses. Patriarch's getting a little bit beat up, but he is a Kislevite, so he's not going to break easily. Uh, Bretonia literally has nothing on the battlefield. They have like a caster and their lord, and that's it. You get the Mordheim Beowulfs move again. And uh, here they come. Both brothers of Tor are going to be cruising across. I think Bretonia can beat Kislev. This just wasn't the build. This was not the build. Um, it was very cool, but I believe the same player brought... Um, no, that was a different game. Yeah, the triple Chaos Knight we saw earlier. Turin is the 10th dentist. What am I? What, I'm a dentist now? What's going on? Yeah, Stank did good. Uh, but, like, Kislev is so superior in the blob fight here. Like, they have a Mortis Engine. They have AoE passive healing. They have unbreakable leadership. They have like Mother Ostankia with healing as well as AoE DPS. Like, there's no way that Bretonia can hope to play the blob against Kislev. I think what you do, and I'm just going to go to the drawing board real quick. Um, GG, well played. Today's winner is going to be Race. Congratulations. The son of Kislev has done it. And we will go. The Winged Hussars did indeed arrive today. They did. If I was playing Bretonia against um, that, I'm sure I would have lost as well. But in retrospect, what would we change if we were playing Bretonia? Uh, definitely like a Spearman frontline with a Grail Relic to kind of keep your boys fighting. Maybe mix in the Beast Slayers of Bastone. I think they'd be really nice to have in there. Uh, from here, maybe a couple Trebs. I think like two Trebuchets could be quite good. 
Faint, I would probably go Faye. I think she's really nice. Awakening of the Wood and Earth Bloom. Um, put her on her Unicorn. We can get Henri and a Paladin. So those would be like your anti-large fighters. Guardian and Blessing the Lady. Yeah, you definitely want that. Cut these items and get you. And we probably only need a Guardian on one of them. Cut this. So this is a start. And then we would get probably um, a couple Fire Arrows and one Poison one like so. We probably need some Knights of the Realm. I think just like a Knight of the Realm could be good. You could even get Knights of the Lionhearted since they do magic damage. So that would be pretty good against like the Beowulfs and things like that. Um, as far as dealing with the Armored Infantry, that's where this build that I have here runs into problems. So maybe cut one Peasant Archer. Definitely want the Grail Relic to play the Blob Fight. I would like to find a way to get some Foot Squires in here. Although you have like Field Trebs, maybe just one Field Treb and then you get a Foot Squire and... Um, can't quite get a second one as it currently stands. So maybe we just go three archers, foot squire, and then peasant mobs. Like something like this might be better. GG to race. He played very well. Yeah, that map is too small for trap builds. Yeah, I, I agree. It's a very small map. Maybe one trebuchet is still worth it though. I don't know. Just, just theory of crafting. It's kind of a fun thing to do. Returnians haven't invented gunpowder <laughs> or the belt. Yeah, love that you're doing total war again. Hey, thank you, man. All right, guys. I hope you all enjoyed the stream. If you had fun, please do drop a like on the way out. Helps keep it going. It helps me gauge what content you guys want to see. If you want more land battles, then you know, interact in that way. Um, if you don't, then it's fine. And we'll, of course, be doing both. So uh, GG well played, guys. We'll see you on the other side. Take care of yourselves. Congratulations to Kislev for winning today's tournament. And uh, that is going to be it. GG well played. Awesome games. Dobi Denya, Dobra Notes. And again, thank you to our four new channel members and to all of you guys who donated makes a world of difference in the life of myself and my wife. So thank you guys so much. It really helps out a lot. See you guys around. Take care of yourself. That is it. And uh, Urson bless this frozen body. GG.